All right, enough of that shit. Got to get this. Uh, Got to get this thing moving. This fine evening. How's everybody doing tonight? Welcome back to the Crucible. I'm your host, Andrew Wilson. Tonight, we've got Jeffrey Phillips going back up against Garland Farms. I'm looking forward to this debate for no particularly good reason, but I do have the Kylo Ren sweatshirt on, so I expect that this may get blood sporty. I have no idea, but I've got front row seats, beer in hand. It ought to be a good night. Now, remember, uh, Tuesday, we're going to have the uh, 10K uh, subscriber party, right? The 10K party. Going to be lots of beer, lots of pizza, lots of trash talk. It's going to be an extravaganza to remember. I'm sure all of you guys are going to enjoy being there. Um, only meat lovers pizza for that. Oh, that's it. I can't, I can't do the... I can't do the fucking fruit and the shit, you know, on the pee. I can't do it. I just, I can't. It's, it's impossible. Anyway, we're going to get this thing moving. We'll be right back in a minute. Both of our debaters. still put to loop for real what the what the fuck so someone always fucking with the settings bastards are always fucking with the set i'm blaming somebody else anyway <laughs> jeffrey phillips garland farms nice to have you guys back right here on the crucible a couple things uh maybe maybe interesting things i don't know but uh but i have actually been looking forward to this we were the back we did make sure we got the proposition this time taken care of so there wouldn't be any problems going forward, right? Uh, so this ought to be good. Jeffrey, why don't you take a second first, introduce yourself, tell everybody a little bit about yourself briefly and where they can find you. You're muted, Jeffrey. You're going to have to unmute yourself there. Yeah, you're still you're still muted, dude. <laughs> Off to a swimming fucking start. <laughs> Off to a swinging start already. Did you maybe mute your microphone by accident? Did you click the mute button on it? I can't. I can't hear you, man. I, I don't. I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> There's a private chat over on the right hand side. You could type in what you need there.
get, I can't hear you. You guys can, you can hear me. I'm guessing. Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. How's that? Okay. I can so hear you. Me, but I got no audio from you, dude. Nothing. And we just had it like two minutes ago. His, uh, his name tag says uh, that the mic is muted. I believe that's what it indicates. Yeah, it's, it's muted, but there's nothing I can do. I can't unmute it because it says the guest chose to mute the mic. So you, you, you're muted on your end. Maybe click the three. There's like three little tabs up at the top right of your panel box. Click that and see if you can click unmute. See, see if that'll work for you. <laughs> Maybe he should leave and come back. Yeah, try that. Pop out of the studio real quick. Yep, no problem. One word, one word. (laughs) 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 Two syllables. Two syllables. Crucible is currently experiencing technical difficulties. Try to they can hear you on the air. Yeah, there you go. There, there you he go. Is. Oh, okay. we got you. Yeah, they heard me on the air the whole time. Yeah, I have no, I have no clue. <laughs> there might be something wrong on your end because they hold, they heard it was coming through the feed. <clears throat> Weird. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway. Cool. Uh, no <laughs> Sorry word. about that. It's no problem. It's all good. Anyway, let's try this again. Jeffrey Phillips. Tell everybody where they can find you briefly a little bit about yourself. <laughs> my, my name is Jeffrey Phillips. Um, I'm a former musician and current activist. Uh, my YouTube is uh, youtube.com slash at Jeffrey Phillips. Okay. And then uh, Garland Farms, go ahead. Okay. Uh, yeah, my name is J.D. Garland. I am a livestock farmer, a little bit of cattle, more goats. I'm in Central Texas. Um, I've got a YouTube channel under the title of Garland Farms, where I put out a lot of information about the harmful effects uh, put out by the crop agriculture that develops the products that end up on the vegan menu. Um, I also do live streams every week on over on uh Jason John Swartz channel. So you can find me over there as well. Uh, but uh, I've got about uh, 200 plus videos on veganism over on uh, the Garland Farms channel if someone wants to check those out. All right. Excellent. Uh, gentlemen, I'm going to give you each, again, seven minutes for your opening statement. You don't have to take all that time if you don't want to. You can take as much of it or as little of it as you want. Before we get in the back and forth, there's going to be call ins tonight. And there's going to be Super Chats read, so strap yourselves in. You're going to be here for a little while in this debate. Uh, happy to have both of you here. Uh, Jeffrey, uh, you're the challenger in this. Yeah. I'm going yeah. to let you open first, but that's good because you yeah. have to close last. So go ahead whenever you're ready. All right. In our first debate, J.D. spent 90% of the two hours we had here trying to convince us that the soy industry is driven by the human consumption of soy oil. He said that soy oil came first and that the meal was a worthless byproduct that that used to be burnt. Uh, Contrary to Garland's claims, soybeans were first introduced to North America in 1765 uh, 1765 as a forage crop for livestock. For the next 155 years, the crop was grown primarily for a forage stock Uh, forage crop for livestock. It wasn't until the 1900s that vegetable oil was used in industry and 1950s that soy was used in food. One problem with using soy plants as forage was that uh, it had to be fed uh, sparingly to the the livestock because uh, the high fat content of the oil, around 15% of the bean is oil. Uh, Because of this, farmers start, or also cows didn't like the taste of it because it was kind of bitter when it was raw. Uh, because of this, the farmers started cooking and defatting the bean to make it less fattening and a better tasting for the, the cow. This allowed much more soy to be fed to the cow, thus causing the boom in soy crops worldwide. Soy meal never in history has been looked at as a byproduct of the soy oil industry like Garland claims. Some places, including soyinfocenter.com, consider it a, a, a byproduct of the meal. Uh, soy oil is a byproduct of soy meal. 
uh, from the animal agriculture industry. Therefore, the responsibility of the crop deaths fall on, an, on the animal ag industry. It is a byproduct uh, or at best a, a, a co-product. The amount of soy oil in the world is based primarily on demand for soy, meat, <coughs> soy meal for the animal uh, agriculture industry. Uh, there's no unique attributes to soy oil consider, uh, compared to the other plant-based oils, meaning there is zero specific reason to demand uh, a soy oil, a uh, specific soy oil. Uh, a demand of vegetable oil uh, would be filled by any other prob likely more sustainable plant oil um, uh, produce uh, uh, instead of producing soy uh, to turn into oil. Garland's constant comparing of soy meal to pecan husk is, is patently false and intellectually dishonest as pecan husks are, are byproducts. And soy meal is uh, the uh, primary product or at best a co-product of soy oil. Uh, Garland also emits data about crop protection. Garland loves using wild boar videos getting killed as, as arguments against vegans, but it turns out that wild, bo wild boars were introduced to North America uh, by the animal agriculture in industry as food. He left out the part where wild boars are the, are the most detrimental and invasive animals in the USA, averaging $1.8 billion of crop, da crop damage annually. How many millions of animal uh, of native foxes, raccoons, coyotes, wolves, and other animals that are killed daily uh, to protect chicken coops, cows, goats, sheep, et cetera, et cetera. Garland claims hunters hunting around uh, crops are doing so be uh, to protect crops, but in reality, these hunters would be would likely be hunting there no matter what what crop was there or not. In a vegan world, there would be zero animal uh, animal beings uh, being killed for crop protection. Uh, these vegan farmers would understand, accept, and even uh, welcome the idea of, of seeing a small loss to the local animals. Garland spent the remainder of our time talking about pecan husks and de denying the validity of our meta studies we sourced. Garland claimed a conflict of interest in our Owl World and Data study because one of the 7,000 financial contributors to this study is the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation um, from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation website. Our livestock investments support smallholder livestock keepers in Africa and Asia in their efforts to uh, to sustainably raise healthy uh, product animals. Uh, our hundreds of millions of families across Africa and Asia, livestock are the most valuable household asset and an irreplaceable source of nutrition, uh, the nutritious diet, especially for children. With regional demand for livestock products rapidly growing, access to better feed, broods, veterinary services will be critical to managing sustainable products on small smallholder farms, as well as ensuring that smallholder livestock can increase household income, improve nutrition, expand economic opportunities for women. Clearly, Bill Gates is not a pro-vegan or, or against animal ag, so I really don't see any conflict of interest by using one of the highest caliber studies that mankind has right now as a resource simply because of a rich guy is trying to make us vegan conspiracy theory. In a real debate, you can only dismiss a study based on bad methodology. You either need to point out the bad methodology error or, and, or accept the study. And, and then in a strange turn of events, Garland used our world and data as a resource during his last debate with, with vegan gains. So clearly he thinks it's a credible source of data. Um, our oceans uh, are, are like the, the largest source of oxygen in the world, and we kill trillions of, of ocean-based uh, creatures for fo food, completely throwing off the balance of nature in a way that is massively detrimental to humans now and in the future. JD also brought up like seven times that vegans are responsible for the majority of crop deaths, which makes zero sense considering 3% of the population of the world is vegan. Therefore, we can only conclude that the animal-based diet is overwhelmingly responsible for the amount of harm done to the environment because 100% of those products that come from animal ag and 90% of the products that come from ant, uh, plant ag are consumed by animal-based dieters. Hell exists in war and factory farming. If we're gonna talk about harm, we can't forget talking about war. War kills everything and everything, crops, vegans, carnists, rabbits, mites, everything. Uh, where in our lives do we see killing being okay in war and animal agriculture? Uh, as long as humans continue this psychopathic tradition of death, we will, fall, we will fail to understand our potential to use compassion in a way to end intentional the intentional death of all sentient beings under all circumstances. Uh, incidental harm 
to the environment always will always be connected with human existence. That's why we need it's important for us to uh, debate these topics in good faith. If we expect uh, to progress as a human species uh, and make you know an attempt at world peace, the easiest way for us to do that is to stop uh, intentionally killing animals for food. Uh, once we're ready to admit that animal deaths and suffering is wrong, the next obvious and easy step is to uh, is to admit that killing humans under any circumstances is wrong. And um, and with that, I'll leave you with a Leo Tolstoy quote: "As long as there are slaughterhouses, there will always be battlefields." I yield the rest of my time. All right. Well, I mean, right down to the wire, man. Uh, perfect. Uh, Garland, go ahead whenever you're ready. You have seven minutes on the clock. Okay, as I understand it, this is basically your typical um, hypocrite critique. Is that what I get? <laughs> you guys no, don't I don't get know the what joke, that is. You? No, I you get the I'm joke. Neutral? I get it. No, no, no. He's, he was he's clowning he was clowning on the he's clowning on the guy who came on last time. Right? It was Andrew it was, was about to Andrew was having a small heart attack. He's like, no. You could have just answered the question. Yeah. Well let, let him let him get to his opening. Let him get to his opening. Yeah. Go ahead, Garland. Okay. Uh let's see here. Where to start? Where to start? Um, first of all. I'll cover this incidental harm thing. Um, vegans always claim incidental harm when gunmen are out there in the uh, apple orchards shooting crows in the face for getting too close to the fruit. Um, that's not incidental. That's intentional. Same thing with the pesticides. That side at the end, that's a suffix. It's spelled C-I-D-E. And it means to kill. So those pesticides that put the items that end up on the vegan menu uh, on the shelf, those are intentionally placed and they're all petroleum derived. So you run out of petroleum, then you're going to have to go out there and kill them with your bare hands. And you will end up killing them because your food requires it, which brings us to killing animals for food. Jeffrey's accusing us of killing animals for food. However, crop agriculture is constantly killing animals for what? Food. What happens if they don't kill those animals? Then the vegans won't have any food. Which brings us to uh, the claim that I was saying that vegans are responsible for all crop deaths. I never said that. That's a blatant lie. What I said was, is that the crop agriculture that provides the items on the vegan menu are responsible for crop deaths and that crop deaths are not incidental as the vegans continue to claim. They are primarily intentional, intentional. Regarding uh, soy as a co-product, co I have been saying all along that soy is a byproduct. I never claimed that they weren't making money with the soy meal. The fact is, is that right now, it, depending on what day of the week it is, soy meal might be making more money on Wednesday and soybean oil might be making more money on Thursday and vice versa. It's about 50-50 right now. And by the way, the soy industry actually started in China back in the 600s. The world didn't start with the United States. The United States is, is a baby compared to China as far as longevity and soy started in China. And in the very beginning, yes, they would pile it up and burn it or they would use it as a soil amendment, which is what I would uh, use it for uh, in the pastures for uh, helping to fortify a grazing pasture rather than feeding it and, and uh, also giving ammunition to the misanthropic vegan cult. Now, what uh, has changed here is actually a win for Garland Farms because now the vegans are actually admitting, at least some of them are actually admitting that soybean meal, for instance, is a co-product because what they used to say is that the, uh, you know, what they did was they played that, that weight game because 20% of every, or 
15 to 20% of every soybean is oil. And the rest is a combination of cellulose and botan botanical defense proteins. And so what they would say is that 80% of the soybeans are being grown to feed livestock, which is a misleading lie. We're not feeding whole soybeans to livestock for the most part. As I understand it, 5 to 7% of the soybeans that are grown are actually fed directly to, to livestock. But the vast majority of the soybean stuffs is going to uh, poultry and pigs, and only less than 2% of any soy product is going to cattle. So all of this blaming the cattle for soy is, is absolutely ridiculous. It's a huge lie. Anyone can look into that and find out that it's true. It's, it's on the, the Bill and Melinda Gates, uh, Our World and Data, uh, you know, literature. Now, Earthling Ed and Joey Carbstrong, and Joey Carbstrong has commented on my on my channel and lost the debate in the in that uh, attempt. Both of them at this point are still claiming that the only crop deaths out there are those that involve harvesting, and they're still saying, you know, these animals are not stupid. They have ears. They spend their lives running from predators. They're good at escaping things, so they get out of the way for the most part. But uh, we know now that the majority, the vast majority of the animals that are killed because of crop agriculture have nothing to do with the harvesting of the crops, but have everything to do with the protection of the crops and the fertilizing of the crops. Um, David Rams and Chris Hines got together. I mean, it's funny, I'm supposed to be this dumb farmer, but you have these, these big time uh, animal rights and vegan activists that are uh, forming committees and trying to uh, debunk Garland Farms. It's hilarious. And you're failing on every level. All you did was give me a bunch of ammunition to prove that you guys are not paying attention to the dark side of crop agriculture, all of the damage and destruction that's done by it, and how unsustainable it is. And what would happen also, which is what we're going to find out today, if you were to do something like omit the soybean industry, which is what they're claiming would happen if uh, livestock, if the livestock uh, industry was abolished. And with that, I'll yield. Yeah, thank you so much for that opening. Right on the wire yourself. Uh, so <clears throat> I just want to make sure everybody knows out there in chat land, wherever you're at, do hundreds of debates in the crucible. This is no different. Obviously, we want to give both people a fair shake in this debate. We both came in good faith, and we want to make sure that they um, they can have this conversation correctly. But before they get into it, make sure that you like, share, subscribe, do all that YouTube shit that you're supposed to do that makes everything, you know, run and epic and awesome. And I saw Chris Hines in the chat there. Well, Chris, I'd love it if you'd come back and do a debate with me. But in any case... Appreciate very much everybody turning out tonight to watch this wonderful debate. Gentlemen, the floor is open. Whenever you're ready, go ahead. You're muted again, Jeffrey. Yeah, there's some, something you're doing on your end that's that you're you're muting yourself, man. I don't I don't I don't know what it is. I don't know what you're doing exactly that's muting you, but you you, you are you are muting yourself for sure. So I, I don't know because I are you maybe you're like you're dual streaming, right? So I don't I don't know that if that has something to do with it. I I, just, I don't know. I don't know why you keep getting muted. Like this is all. Re if you if you think I'm muting him, I see the vegans in chat are all upset. They think I'm muting him or something. I'll give you the screen recording. It shows on this end. So 
I mean, that would be hilarious. I'm just not doing it though, right? So it's on, it's on your end. Like I'm not above doing stuff like that. I'm, All right. Know, yeah. I'm how just, about I'm, that? There we go. You, we got you. We got you. Go ahead, man. There. Yep. Okay. Cool. The conspiracy has been debunked. <laughs> yes. So, um, I like finishing off the tree before we get to the next branch. So, I think you're gonna have to. Uh, at least concede on a couple things here before we're able to move forward, Garland. Uh, Tell clearly, me more, Jeffy. Well, clearly you don't like. There are very specific parameters um, that are that explain what a a byproduct, a co-product, and a primary product are. And you came up here saying all you spent most of the time we were here last time saying that that soy. Uh, meal was this worthless byproduct and clearly it's not and it wasn't and it never has been and now it is a in considered a co-product or a primary product so you know all your 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 pecan husk stuff is all out the window so you're going to have to concede on some of these things you said in the last debate uh the whole being soy being by, piled up and burnt soy soy meal being pride uh, it's never happened the word yes, burnt did. isn't anywhere near soy. Are you from, or, did you live in China in the 16 in the 600s? No, no. Is soy meal a a, a co-product or a primary product or a or a byproduct? I will answer that here. Uh, Andrew, if you check, I'm sharing a screen here. I'm asking you. Yeah, I'm telling you. You see? The, do you see the screen? That that doesn't matter. I'm asking okay. you in your words. With everything you, said that all, you know, didn't everything you you've researched, is it a byproduct, a co-product, or a primary product? Okay, th this is science. Answer direct. the question, Garland. Andrew, can I, can I speak without him interrupting? Yeah, well, let him let him answer the question if you're asking it. So let him let him go ahead and answer. The, the question's been asked. Okay. So here's Science Direct. It says soybean meal is a byproduct of soybean oil production. And here we've got National Institutes of Health. Um, extruder expeller soybean meal is a byproduct of the soybean oil extraction. Okay. SF gate, whatever that is. Soybean meal is a byproduct of soybeans. American Association of Swine Veterans. Since soybean meal is a byproduct. Okay. Maybe I could ask I, this better. I'm still, Ar I'm still, answer, I'm still answering the question. Can I answer why. the question? Well, Can on, I answer the question? Garland, I, th I think we do understand. Not by pointing at a bunch of links. Articulate right? why. Yeah, you're saying it's a byproduct. What's the, what's the point here? What are you trying to get at, Jeffrey? Well, this was the main point he spent all last time talking about, and uh, and he needs to concede on something because it's not what he's saying. Well, and just you, because he's pointing at some links, I want him to articulate exactly why, how, how, what makes these things these things, and why he thinks that soy meal is a is a byproduct when it clearly drives the entire market of the soy industry. Okay. They can get soy, they can get vegetable oil anyway. I already said this earlier. Like veg there's nothing special about soy oil that that causes a a uh, a a, a mar the market to to promote it. They can get their as far as the cooking oil, oil it does. As far as the huh? cooking oil it does. Yes, they they're claiming certain health benefits to the soybean oil. So soy soy uh the 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 uh, soy soy info um why don't you look that up and well, see what they say let me see if, if i can get some clarity here just to, just to make sure we're on the same page the question that i have written down from you jeffrey is is so are soybeans a or, or the soybean meal a byproduct yeah. is that is that the question you're asking yes and are you not satisfied with the evidence that was provided uh no let me show one more thing, Andrew. No, before. in your words, Garland, I'm asking you not to point at a bunch of links that that you can't, you can't, you know, you need a specific study. You Andrew, need something. can you tell him to stop interrupting me, please? Well, you are asking him to demonstrate this. I do think it's fair to let him demonstrate it, Jeffrey. 
Okay, so here's the um, United Soybean Board, okay? This is unitedsoybean.org. This is a soybean organization. All eyes on soybean oil demand. See, over over time, over, since the since the year uh, sixteen, I mean uh, six hundred fifty so, yeah. uh, A.D., uh, the pendulum has swung back and forth. It depends on on what year or what day of the week, uh, whether the soybean oil or the soybean meal is making more money. Right now, all eyes are on soybean oil demand. And you can see here it says, "Okay, US but wouldn't that make it a co-product, Garland?" Can I finish? Yeah, you can finish. Let him finish. I'll give I'll give you plenty of time to respond, Jeffrey. But All right. let's let him make his point here. U.S. soybean mill has had a steady hand on the wheel of demand for many years with oil riding shotgun, but it's a new day. Oil is in the driver's seat. So these days, because of biodiesel, which is a product consumed by humans, not cows, oil is in the driver's seat. So you're saying that the soybean meal is driving demand, but oil right now is driving demand. What I said earlier in my opening statement was that it's about 50-50. In one day, it might be 51-49 in favor of the oil. And the next day, it might be 5149 in favor of the meal. Are they co products or byproducts? It doesn't make any difference. The it fact of the matter does. no, it doesn't. Then you, why, does you it, why does it make it? Why does it make a difference? Garland, Garland, describe let him, let him a co product, go, go Garland. Ahead, you absolutely just described a co product. So admit that it's a co product. There are very specific parameters around what makes a co product and a byproduct and a primary product. Clearly, soy meal and, and soy oil are co-products of each other. They're, they are not, they are not a, a, it's not a byproduct. Okay. Define, the, you know, like, can you define the difference between the two? So for the, for the audience's sake, I don't usually cut in and Let's ask, it but, it, but I kind of have to ask here, why is this distinction? Can you give me a link? Why is this distinction important to uh, your argument? Can you just kind of like keep because it, get us up Garland to speed? made it the most important part of his argument and took up the most time. And we're you know we're planning on going back and forth at this for a while. That's what debates are all about. Can yeah, I explain bringing new why? information up and stuff like that? So can I explain this is something again? We didn't get past last time, and and I'm I'm, I'm revising the information that we found available. And um, and and so I, I don't you need this. You need to explain why. Soy meal is a byproduct opposed to being a co-product, because you just explained it as a co-product without a doubt by by the definition of, of the word. Like, I'm going to I'm going to pull up the, the parameters around what makes what. And we're going to look at that um, instead of looking at a bunch of random links. Yeah, I guess I guess my question is, um, assuming for a second it was, let's just like say it was a co-product. How does that tie in to the current topic? Because Garland was saying that there was no responsibility of the soy meal, no response, the, the, the crop death responsibility was not on the soy meal that was fed to the cows. Oh, I never said that. Vegetable oil I never only. said that. I never yes, said that. You did. No, yes, okay, you did. Okay, well, now, now I understand. The whole time I think the audience last time. understands. Okay. So, go, so yeah. go, go ahead, Jeffrey. Got it. So. Is it a define, you know, define the difference between the two? Um, what's a co-product and what's a byproduct, Garland? You tell me you're the you're you the expert just on co-products. Co -product, I just showed, I just showed you that, this, that the National Soybean Board is calling it I don't care a what byproduct. That In your words, describe so, to me why so you, you what, think it's a byproduct and not a co-product, because you just explained a co-product by definition of the word. So if you're 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 conflicting your story and you need to clear it up before we can go anywhere else. No, I'm not conflicting my story. This whole thing started, this whole soy issue started You just with, said byproducts and co-products are, are the same thing and they don't matter. And it doesn't matter, gonna, but it absolutely does matter, especially in a debate when we're talking, when we're getting down to the, to the nitty gritty on this shit. Okay, Jeff, we, we're not on your channel. You can't- Is it a co-product or is it? 
I'm gonna I'm gonna allow you to make an ass of yourself, Jeffrey. I'm trying to you, answer you. You asked you can... what would happen if animal ag disappeared, dude. Like these are all things you said in the last debate. We'll give him a chance. This to is what now. we're talking about. He's a, he's okay, then answer the question. What would happen if animal ag disappeared? No, 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 no. You're answering the first question. No, you brought up that. You brought that is question a, up. No. <laughs> yes, you uh -uh. did. Garland, you're not doing this again. Jeffrey, I never claimed and that. Is it all... a byproduct or a co product? Because how you described it in your words, you described a co product. I'm going to sit back and wait for you. you you're going to. This is we're not going past anywhere until you 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 define this. Oh really? Yeah. Well, I'm not going to define it. You def you're the one that's saying that it's a co-product. If you're if you're going to say it's I'm a co-product, uh, it's a co-product. The world calls it a co-product. Are you going to let me finish the <laughs> sentence? Finish. If the National Soybean Board is calling it a byproduct. Then you, some bicyclist from California, is going uh, to supersede articles written by people that are uh, that are article writers. Maybe they get the terminology article wrong. Writers. But I'm the industry on... looks at it as yes. a co as a co product, co product, and how okay. you just described it, you described it as a co product. Are you saying that if it's not you a said they're it's fifty forty? Hang on, hang on. Let him let him answer now. Let him answer. Are you saying that if it's a co-product and not a byproduct? I am not saying anything. Let Stop him answer. Strongman. Let him answer. We'll get. We'll give you plenty I of asked time. Ask the question. I he's know, answering, but you, he's asking another question. You may not like the answer, but you have to at least wait till he answers to dis express how displeased you are with the answer. Okay, go ahead, Carl. But if, okay, I think he's saying that if soybean meal is not a byproduct but a co-product that somehow that means that abolishing animal agriculture would also somehow abolish the soybean industry did i say did i say that why are you why are you building a straw man well, the, right now well, like, I'm not, but we, we're kind of on the a, question I, I think that we're is on it agreement. a co-product or a byproduct garland i think that we're in because agreement. you described it as a co-product but you called it a byproduct this is the main crux of this whole thing, bro. You have to answer questions in debates, Garland. I think that we agree that the soybean agriculture industry is destructive and harmful to the You're environment. Deflecting and dodging right now, Garland. Answer I the think, question, please. I think we're in agreement that the soybean industry is destructive and harmful to the environment. Do we agree on that? All industries are destructive to the environment. Is regenerative rotational grazing destructive? Re regenerative rotational grazing is a joke and a in a pipe dream uh, that has not been found to you know like be add up the way you guys think it is. But we're not here to talk about you know, that like, because that's not what's you know, going like, on in this world, and that's outside the premise that we agreed to. You know, like just because you have some goats in your yard doesn't mean you're a re you're this master re regenerative well, farmer guy. Hang on, it's not outside the premise of what you guys agreed to. It is because we agreed to the the, the time being now, not in the future, not in the past. In in the world now, regenerative farming is is a is a theory that is not being done in the world. Uh, mass, it's not you a know, theory. Commercial not a theory. farming is what we're here talking about. The harm that's being done now, not not regenerative farming pipe dream utopia in the future. Okay, I was you not understand? aware that that was part of the premise baked in that the time frame had to be current. Yeah. So, okay, that I wasn't aware of that. So that's the first first I've heard that. If you guys agree to that, though, I'm happy to enforce it. But from from this angle, this seems like a valid question, Garland. I have to let it stand. What is the question exactly? I'm not repeating myself again. You heard it 14 you times. You want me to define? You want me to define? No. Co-product. I want you to explain why you think uh, that the soy meal is a byproduct when you just described it as a co-product. Okay. Like you literally described it. Okay. So yeah, but just the difference between byproduct and co-product. Okay. The 
right now the soybean oil is going for about 85 cents a pound. The soybean meal is going for about 13 cents a pound. There are scientists working overtime trying to breed a soybean with a higher oil content because there's much larger profit margins with the soybean oil. Because the soybean oil is a little bit less than 20% of every soybean and the meal is around 80 or 82% of every soybean, then on some days they make more money with the soybean meal than they do the soybean oil. If, if by co-product you're saying that they're making money with the meal as well, I have always said that they make money with the soybean meal. In fact, on some days they make more money with the meal than they do the oil. Does that answer your question? No, and that's not what I what I've said. That you can you you may as well look up the definition of of it right now and read it to us instead of you know saying that I said the definition was something else. Well, it's so I'm just I'm just trying to for clarity's sake, make sure I get this correct. But it sounds like Garland is saying, based on the fact that uh, there's money that's made here, doesn't necessarily mean that it's a co-product or a byproduct. I'm not sure what the definition of this is. Maybe one of yeah, you guys can look pull it up. it up, and then we can just go from there. Okay, here's what I've got. It says, although co-products are usually planned desirable outputs from the manufacturing process. They can also be used as ingredients in other production processes. Byproducts are materials of value that are produced as a residual of or incidental to the production process. So this, this really um, refers to the production process, doesn't it? Byproducts or co-products appear to be a result of what distinguishes them is the production process. The fact so that you, they're, they, they fetch around the same type of money. No, basically. I don't think that's, that's, not the, that's not the definition of co-product and byproduct. That might not be the definition of the one you're looking right now. Well, that's why I asked you earlier, Jeffrey, to give me your definition, and and I would like to see the. No, source. but you're you're the one demanding that it's one thing and not the other, and then you de you explained it in a way that that, that defined. Co co I'm, I'm not the one that demanded it was one. You thing are. The other. You spent you are. the whole last debate saying that it was a worthless byproduct and that it was used I to be burned. I didn't say it was worthless. No, no, I said it in the beginning. It was burned. Berlin, which is it? Is it a co-product or a byproduct? According to the definition I just read, no, it's a byproduct. By your your words. Well, that how, well, how hang is hang on, listen, listen, just so you understand. He can give you whatever definition he wants. It doesn't matter what the definition is that he gives you. That's the definition that you're going to be working within. Uh, whether he gets it from Google or he gets it off his brain, that's equally valid. It doesn't matter. Same with you. Whatever your definition is is your definition. Um, saying, so well, it's he's not, skirting it's not he valid didn't... to say, well, he pulled it off Google. You can pull definitions off Google. Fuck, I do it all the time when I need to define something. So he's uh, clearly skirting, though, dude. Like, you know, you see him skirting the question. I'm not, he I'm not taking his side. Because... I'm just expressing to you <laughs> that he, he has now given a definition. And I will so, say. So if you're, if you're if you're moving this into semantics, that's fine. That's it's critical. Not, well, semantics mean everything, dude, in a debate. Just say, well, listen what I'm saying. Semantics are critical in a debate. That's what I was just saying. If you're moving it into semantics, though, he did give you a definition. So I okay. don't know where you, you go is, from Is there. that his final answer is what I'm asking then? Okay. If you look up how... Co-product soybean... or byproduct. Those are the only ways you can answer this question, Garland. Jeffrey, you're you clearly can to... skirting at this point. Like, you have to let me speak, This is really man. ridiculous, and we're spending a lot of time you on do, it. Dude, you, do, like, you, have him, like, him, you do have to let him respond now. Just give him a second, let him respond. It's a one-word we'll answer. Okay, here's. it's not a one-word. This, this is, you've got, 
you've got organizations like the National Soybean Association right, describing it as a byproduct. And the reason I think that they're describing it as a byproduct is because the process, the manufacturing process, because all of the soybeans are crushed and they're crushed by machines that are called soybean oil extractors. And so the primary processing that's going on there is crushing the soybean to extract the oil. In fact, they don't just crush the soybeans, they take it another step to get more oil out and they soak them in hexane, which is a gasoline derivative it's a neurotoxin, and that's why soybean oil actually causes... This isn't sleep. answering my question, Andrew. Like, this isn't... He's clearly wasting time. My job is to time. make people answer your questions. My job is just to keep the debate on track. That's it. Also, when you're talking about this, the holdup now, if it's semantics, he has given a definition. If he okay, hasn't now, given I'll, a definition, okay. then... Then I'd like to give you, my if definition. If you have a different... Yeah, I have a source it. Sure. Source it. Source it. Okay, what's the source? We'll, we'll get the source. Byproduct. Byproducts are materials of value that are produced as a residual of or incidental to the, the production process. By product, by the production product process. Did you hear that? Be yeah, the oil. A are you going to interrupt me? I let you answer. Uh, you can set up byproducts to, contrib uh, to contribute costs, burden to the overall production process. Co-products. Co-products are, hold on one sec, my mouse dry. Ah. Co-products are desirable secondary goods that are generated during the manufacturing process and can be sold or reused profitably. They might also be products that are usually manufactured together or sequentially because of a product's uh, or process similarities. Although co-products are usually planned desirable outputs from the manufacturing process, they can also be used as ingredients in other production processes. I'll get the link in a second. Okay. Do you know what the machine is called that extracts the oil from the it's Like soybean? an extruder, right? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Let's look it up. <laughs> Why? Why is this well, relevant? My question well, it, to you it's on whether it's, it's a relevant or, or a, a byproduct. It's relevant because of the definition that you just gave us. It's not an extruder, it's a soybean oil expeller. So the way that soybean meal is, is produced is through a soybean oil expeller. Yeah, farmers will have them, and they'll, they'll run the beans through it, they'll pull the oil out, and sometimes they'll use it in their, uh, you know, they'll use it in their farm equipment. And, yeah. You know, I've seen the video so, of it. It's so like cool. I said before, according to your definition and mine, that both yeah. byproducts and co-products can turn a profit. What defines it? Soy was around finish. being used as as, as soy. Let, let him finish his answer. Before it was made and into I'll oil. I'll give you plenty of time, just like I have been, Jeffrey. Let him finish his answer. Okay, it's called an a soybean oil expeller. That's that's the machine that soybeans go in that produces both soybean oil and soybean meal. So the soybean oil expeller expels the oil. You're producing oil. The oil is going for about 85, 90 cents a pound. The meal that's left over after the oil is Ricard. extracted is going for about 13, 14 cents a pound right now. So 13, 14 cents a pound versus 85, 90 cents a pound. They want more oil. The more oil they can get, the more money they make. Whatever's left over, they can also make a profit on. But, but a byproduct can also bring back gargantuan product uh, profits. So that doesn't mean that it's a co-product. And I'm not, I'm not even, I'm not against people calling it a co-product. If you want to, I don't think it fits That's the not definition. How it works. It's I don't think I don't think it fits the definition because it's based on the processing, the the uh, the manufacturing process, and the manufacturing process clearly says that it must go through 
and a soybean oil expeller. It doesn't go through a soybean meal expeller. It goes through a soybean oil expeller. So you didn't just listen to the whole thing I just read. Yeah, I listened to the whole thing. What, what in, what in <clears> there? The words did... coming out of your mouth don't match that you were listening. Well, I have more. I can maybe you need to listen to the want. Word, listen better to the words that are coming out of my mouth. They expelled the oil to defat the the meal they were they were feeding to the cows. <laughs> like it's expelling the oil. That's the byproduct. You're talking and it was about a byproduct. you're talking about here in the United industry, States until industry and the yeah, whole industry and, started and in the 600s. The, the, the numbers that we have in the empirical the data that we have around the world started in you know, the 600s. Like, oh, we one at a time, or we're not going to get anywhere. Now, hang on. We're so, answer start with the Jeff question. Hang on. We're going to start with Jeffrey. Uh, we just ended with Garland. Jeffrey, go ahead. The thing is, is if if we're stuck on this for this entire time, if this is going to be the entire debate, is just that you don't agree with his definition, he doesn't agree with yours. How how do we no, how are we going to tie this together to move forward? What's the he point? hasn't told me whether or not it's a co-product or a byproduct, though. He just keeps going over definitions. Well, he just said all, all I need the answer to is, is it a byproduct or a co-product? He just said that he think it, it's I fine to with, say it's both. I agree with, the, with not, the national. That's not factually correct. It's they're two I different agree, things. I agree with the National Soybean Association. They call it a Wait, byproduct. Who says what? They call it a byproduct. I think because it's because whether it's a co-product or a byproduct, is directly so it, it is a directly dependent upon the manufacturing process and so the manufacturing process is that the soybeans have to go through a soybean oil expeller so if you're expelling the oil that's the manufacturing process you expel you expel the oil the oil is selling for 85 to 90 cents a pound and what's left over is the soybean meal, and it goes to livestock. Darling, it also you, brings back a profit. You, you. This is the third time you've said that without answering my question. Co-product or product or byproduct? You can't say both. Is this, is not, this what is this what correct. Avi told? Is this the technique that Avi told you to take? No, on I this? had this planned for you the first time. I think you dropped acid the first time. You didn't even say. Are you a word. appealing to ridicule now? Yes. <laughs> okay, then that means you're wasting time, and well, you don't have get, anything else to say. If so this is if this is super on, on, if this is really if this is important, if this hinges on this is if this hinges on Jeffrey's argument, then it is fair to to ask the question. Just to a clear, concise answer: Is it a product or is it a byproduct? Okay. In my opinion, according to the definition that I read and you read, Jeffrey, it is a byproduct. That's my opinion. Now that's a now that couldn't be clearer. Correct? Yeah. Okay, then we can move on from here. Yeah. So um you said in our last debate that uh, that that, that the, the byproduct of soy uh, was uh, piled up and burned. Do you concede that that's not true? It's not true today. No, it's not. No, ever in history. Yes, in China, that's exactly what they did, and they've done it in other times as well. It's not that the soybean industry did not start in the United States. But we're talking about now, bro. If we're talking about now, then but you're referring to the beginning of the soybean industry, then why are you referring to the past? When you say buy the bean, is that like what, metric or an imperial what, me, imperial measurement? It's by the bushel. Beans come yeah, in how the much bushel. is a bushel? You want to know how much? How many beans? How much are in is the bushel? a bushel? You should know right off the top of your head if you're why a farmer. Why should I know right off the top? You of should my know head right off a, the top of your head if you're a farmer. If I'm a goat farmer, why should I know exactly how many soybeans? You, are you've in spent bushel? years convincing people you are a cow farmer, and now you're a goat farmer because I called you out. How you much? Me how out? much? What's the size of a bushel? In what way did Charlie, you call me out, Jeffrey? That that does uh, incidental whatever. If you do all this regenerative you, stuff, you must know okay, what a bushel is. Did you is. drop acid again? What, what is going you must on, know Jeffrey? What a bushel is, bro. How come you don't know what a bushel is? Because I'm a goat farmer. I don't know exactly how many soybeans are in one bushel. What difference does it make? 
it, it absolutely makes a difference. Just like oh. intentional and incidental are two completely different things that then you don't seem us, to understand. Then tell us what difference does it make? How many? Exactly? Hey, hey Garland, why is why is uh, why is most uh, why is soy meal inedible? Is it because like humans can't consume it or? Well, I think it depends on how, you know, how it's been processed. You've got the crushing. Absolutely. And then you've got the hexane really, extract. Every bit of soy meal. Let could him be answer, Jeffrey. Food. Let him answer. He did. He did answer. He said no, yes. No, he was qualifying. It's okay to qualify okay. with an answer. Go ahead, man. I'm not even sure what he was asking now. What are you asking, Jeffrey? I was asking about the edibility of animal meal or uh, okay. soy meal because you, you like talking about how it's completely inedible all the time when a simple change in the process would make all of it edible. And you, you seem to think that, um, you know, soy would go up um, and uh, or you, you say soy would go up for a, for a fact when you don't know that when you can't control the markets. OK, you, you said two things there. First, you said. Um that soybean meal would be edible with a change in the process? What, what change yeah, are you talking like about? Like you just said. What change are you talking about, Jeffrey? They just have to uh, process it a little bit more clean to make it human grade. What do you mean? Oh, that's the other thing. Uh, the, other th the other thing that was weird, Garland, you said that you said recently several times that you don't know the numbers on crop deaths when in our last debate, I spent the better part or we spent the better part of our opening statement telling you the, the, the best empirical data about crop deaths. And then somehow, you know, once you did your opening statement, you said that we didn't like talking about crop deaths, but we just spent most of the time talking about the, the, the really good uh, empirical data about crop deaths that you say doesn't exist. Um, you know, how, how do you how can you do all this stuff if you say that you don't know the crop death numbers? And then how could you say you don't know the crop death numbers when we gave them to you in our last debate? Okay. The crop deaths numbers that you gave me did not include many of the ways that crop agriculture kills animals. Sure it does. We, we went through all the ways. It goes down to lizards and fish and insects. No, I didn't say how many animals and, and species. I said the ways that animals are killed. Of, why would it need to go into the ways if they're looking at the total number of deaths, regardless of the ways? Because. Oh, because you care about animals, right? You care about suffering of animals. That's what you're going to say. Look, I don't I don't give a shit about your former debates. We're here for the particular topic tonight. This is unless you're going to tie it, unless you're going to tie it in to this particular topic. We hinged everything on this definition for whatever your argument was going to be. We got the answer to the definition. I'd like to hear the arguments. I'd like to to see this actually move forward. Got I don't it. care about rehashing the last debate. Copy. So considering what I said in my opening debate about uh, the the. Uh, so soy oil not having any like special thing about it that makes it actually in demand over any other vegetable oil um do you concede that soy oil uh drives the market for soy products um if yes i can see that soy oil by any other kind of oil that are far easier and more sustainable to grow okay i i, th I think um this might be a good time for me to, to um, introduce some data that I've compiled this week. And I can give you the sources. That's of not an answer well. to my question, Garland. You can't just turn, drive through things and, and, and just talk about things that don't have to do with the question I just asked you. Well, they do, because what you're trying to do is you're the trying second to... second debate is where you go over the first the things you talked about in the first debate and figure out which ones are true or not. That's the whole point of a debate is getting down to the real facts, you know? So that's what I'm trying to do, but you won't let me speak. Okay. Do you, do you think soy oil has some specific quality to it that causes a demand that is higher demand 
than any other vegetable oil. Yes, I do. Why is that? I think that the, uh, the, uh, the powers that be at least will tout the soybean oil as being the healthiest of all the vegetable so, uh, so no, i'm that. not finished i'm not fin I, going I'm not, I let him finish that. man let him finish i don't have to prove it all of the 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 uh people who tout soybean oil as the healthiest would have to prove that i don't think soybean oil is is healthy at all nor do i okay good we can we can yeah, agree on i don't that. know any health products that claim that soy is soy oil is healthier than any other oil it doesn't exist it's something you've made up okay the other what, issue... i asked you specifically what attributes to soy oil do you think uh, make it cause this extra i'm amount trying of to specific, i'm trying to tell you specific but you won't let him man speak. yeah let him let him finish man just let him finish and then after he's done then you can you can revisit it but let him finish his point copy Okay, soybean oil is directly linked to the rest of the bean. And just like you've said uh, several times today, is that that soybean meal, you said that we could change the process to make it edible for human beings. And so if you're going to change the process to make it edible to suit human beings, then what's so special about that oil is that it is directly linked to the protein, the soy protein, because the soy protein is the, that is the, it's not a complete pro protein. It's uh, it's deficient in, in a one very important amino acid, but it's the most complete plant protein available as, as a, a plant protein. And so if you're going to omit all of those grams of animal protein, you're going to have to replace it with something. And soybeans, the soybean protein is going to have to be a primary source of that protein. Why not? Now give, them, now give them time to answer here, Garth. The reason why pot soy is so popular is because of the uh, incentives the government, um, the uh, the uh, subsidies the government pays in order for soy to exist uh, to be fed to cattle. Um, there's there's not there's there's no reason why soy would be the only protein source for vegans if if or or for a, a population if if we got rid of animal agriculture there could well, there's protein in in all kinds of stuff so to say that we just all be walking around eating wafers of soy you know is is absolutely unreal unrealistic soy would plummet obviously immediately plummet if if the demand for animal agriculture wasn't there, bro, and more sustainable oils would replace the soy oil, clearly, like clearly, come on. I, I don't think so. Yeah. No, of course I, I you don't. You're here defending everything to the death. You won't concede on anything. If you would let me speak. You can speak, sir. Okay. What is this graph? Okay, no I, I, on it. I, I told you I would supply the sources. Okay. Why don't you do that now? Okay, give me a moment. It's multiple sources. I had to compile. You you this. You, you have the most weirdest wishy washy sources, bro. Like you need to cite your sources. You brought a, a, a YouTube video of birds getting shot to a to a debate as your main source. No, that was a link to a about. 500 videos of animals being shot so so for, garland why do you use wild boar videos in your videos against vegans when wild boars exist because of animal agriculture can we stick to one subject no and no no, no. i, I want to talk to you about that one we got plenty of time while you're getting your citations how about you answer that one how do you how show me the, the dude do your mental gymnastics on that one please how do you just don't cry Using, Jeffrey, don't cry. Using these things, using videos of people crying, shooting dude. wild boars against vegans when those boars 
exist because of animal ag and those boars still do billions of dollars worth of damage to crops how do you justify that garland like how do you sleep at night bro <laughs> well, say we, something okay okay um who's responsible for those wild boar <sighs> animal agriculture bro how long have you, you been a, a vegan? If you let a domesticated pig go within like how long have you been a vegan? Two generations. It's a wild boar. They weren't nor they weren't native to North have America. You, have you ever they were brought eaten, here by people trying to eat Have you ever them. eaten pork in your life? Of course I have. I've okay, also okay. So then you're just as responsible as it anyone means else. Nubian, so I'm just as much just as much as a farmer as you are. Are you? Yeah, did you did you, bottle Nubians, bro. did you bottle feed uh, uh, some baby goats today? I have, and I, and I and I and yeah, I did for my daughter. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, made made goat milk goat milk formula, bro. Not as today? a vegan, as a carnivore, as a paleo. Mm -hmm. When I was keto, have you guys yeah, been vegan before? Didn't did think so. Today we're talking about today, right? You said it was this was. Oh, I mean, today. In, in our religion, we fast, so <laughs> that's that's <laughs> actually excluding me right <laughs> word but but beer's okay so uh, garland, hang on i've got the links know? i've got the links here uh that well, I'm still, garland's I'm, putting in i'm putting them down in chat just so all of you guys know there's multiple links uh but i'm copying them putting them all down yeah, there's some what happens if is if you only if you if you you limit yourself to only information that's available in some study no then everything that Wild. everything then all of the facts have not been studied. So what I do is I do my own studies and I compile my own numbers, <laughs> but I'm giving you references so that you can check these numbers out. You can, you can double check my work. Wild boars, care. Garland. Tell me about the wild boars. Well, anyone that's eaten seed on at least the wild anyone boars, that's Garland. anyone that's eaten just pork give would me have one to... single concession. So I know you're a reasonable man. Anyone that's eaten pork would have to shoulder some responsibility for the feral pigs. That's not what I asked. It's not the answer you wanted, but that's what you asked. No, that's that's not what you imply when you use it against vegans. <laughs> At no, least just no. concede on that, dude. Just it's an easy Jeffrey, concession. Be like, all right, Jeffrey, that was probably not the best thing to use against vegans. Just say it, Jeff dude. Jeffrey. Jeffrey. Just say it. Is, you talk are, about all the other crop, the, all the crop protection stuff you say happens simply for vegetables to be grown. Jeffrey, and it's by not, not true. by it's not allowing true. me to the answer, you're making yourself look like an ass. Is to protect your animal agriculture. Without Jeffrey, a doubt. by not allowing me to answer, you're making yourself look like an ass. That's just your opinion. No, you will not allow me to answer. Are you doing ad hominem now? Well, let him answer. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. What you're the picture that you're trying to paint, Jeffrey, because you're a den dishonest liar, is that the only animal that I it's just like earlier, you said that I link you to a video showing someone shooting a bird in defense of crops. When bird. actually I when act <laughs> When actually I sent you a, a link that would that was a link to about 500 links to about 500 videos showing crop protection shooters shooting not just pigs and one bird, but hundreds of birds and doves and and geese and swans and rabbits and gophers. And in a and, and in a vegan world, that deer, wouldn't happen. Garland. And deer and deer. How do I apply for that job? I'm kidding. I'm joking. Obviously, I'm kidding. For bit. animal feed, Garland. For animal feed. All those killings. No, they weren't. No, they weren't. A, how, big how chunk it of it are, a big chunk of it are. You're you're trying to act take this like carnivore diet position where you don't take responsibility for any vegetables or any crops. It's complete BS. You did it in the first one and you're doing it again. You aren't a carnivore diet or you're against the carnivore diet. I'm not against it. I'm not, but I'm not for the it. 3% of the population of the world are vegan, Garland. 
So how could you say that these things over and over in all your videos? Jeffrey, you look I, like you're getting mad, bro. Jeffrey, I've repeatedly how said. How could you say these things? Got to let him finish. Let him finish. Jeffrey, I've repeatedly said that the vegans aren't responsible. You know, they don't they don't shoulder all of the responsibility, but the crop agriculture that provides the items on the vegan menu is responsible. And so what you're what the vegans want is for they, they say that we're only three. I'm not the, the vegans, Garland. Attack my positions I'm bringing to you on this debate. Stop straw manning my position. I'm not here is, to talk about those things. We're in where we have a premise we're set to. Okay, now you've asked me a lot of questions. Now it's time no, for me to ask I've you asked a question. You like three questions, and you've spent this whole now time. Now it's my turn. Do you want a vegan world? Wild boars, Garland. Concede to the wild boars, so I know you're a reasonable man. Do you want a vegan world? Absolutely. Okay. So as I was saying earlier, as the vegans want a vegan world. And so the alternative that to having nutritious animal foods is for us to rely on the crop agriculture that's destroying the environment and killing more animals than animal agriculture is killing. Garland, I, there is no real difference in violence. If mankind is violent enough to do one thing, they'll be able to do a different thing. So clearly... Um, uh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, and that too. Animal foods, you know, clearly rely on crop ag agriculture also, Garland. You know, like you keep forgetting that. That's what we're saying. You know, you're no. taking this carnivore diet position. Like there's still a massive, like I said before, if, if you know, like if 5% of the world is, is vegetarian and 3% of the world is vegan, we're not the ones doing it. And you're saying we are, and you do nothing but do anti-vegan propaganda and say these things. And, and no matter what I say or what I can prove to you, you won't change doing that because you're not a reasonable man. You won't. I've given you an out to concede to like an easy, easy thing and you won't even do it. So you're, there's no point to debating people like you, Garland. You just you just say you won afterwards. Like you won't even concede to something that, that you know you got busted on. I didn't get busted on it. Yeah, you did. You use it. You use you use these videos of people machine gunning pigs and you're like, look what the vegans are doing. Like, it's ridiculous, Garland. Be reasonable. Do you Be think that's, reasonable or no one's you, going to take you serious? You don't think that vegan, you don't think that those pigs deserve to live? Oh, boy. <laughs> if your animal agriculture brought an invasive species to our continent and it's destroying our food how is that vegans fault garland didn't didn't you earlier confess to have eaten pork did i ever say i've been vegan since birth what does this have to do with anything well isn't uh, any feral pigs if you want to blame animal agriculture garland wouldn't, wouldn't you, you have to also blame him any let him finish let him finish <laughs> he's almost done with his point and jeffrey you'll be able to respond i promise wouldn't you also have to blame any consumer that's put demand on the pork industry, including yourself? Sure, but in sorry, my bad. Go ahead. Of course, there. Are, this is this is what we're doing here is getting down to the numbers. There is a certain amount of responsibility on humanity existing. Like I said in my opening statement, um, you know there there's a difference. Um, you know, there's a difference of uh, intent and incident, like there is incidental damage to the environment for everyone to exist. Uh, and, and you don't quite want to understand that because it debunks a lot of the things you say intent. Like if I go outside and step on some mites on the ground, there's no, there was no intent for me to kill those mites. But if I buy a pig and slit its throat, th that's an intentional death that's an intentional uh, uh uh rights violation it's not me walking outside and killing some bacteria on the ground like you want to get all deep into this there's intent and incident 
incidental things happen and intentional things happen. And you need to learn the difference between those two because you clearly don't. Okay. Vegans so, want to stop the intentional killing. Clearly, there's incident to everyone existence. Everyone has a body count of crop damage, you know, crop death on theirs. But vegans are is considerably, considerably less than. Let me know when your monologue are, is over so I can speak. Are you, you gonna? Just jump let it, in. Well, to, let him. Let him you respond. You don't like because, what I'm saying, and you want to talk over me because well, you just can't well, stand no, what I'm saying. No, it, but it, you are cycling the same thing here. Uh, well, he's so he, I, dude. Dude's the king of cycling. What do you mean? Not, not. You let him. I'm not let him trying to beat you. Like I'm not trying to beat you up. On it. I'm just saying you made your point. Fair enough to let him respond to it. Go ahead. Okay, so if I understand what he just said, he's equating with all of the harm done by vegans as something, you know, he used the example of walking outside and stepping on a mite. However, when a vegan walk out, walks outside, it's very likely that they've got a huge bag of food with them because they've got to eat all damn day. And so it's your opinion. One of the th we're one here of to the debate, Marlon. Come on. One of the things that they that's on the vegan menu is fruit, like apples and oranges and pears and peaches and apricots. You and literally grapes. said this whole thing in our first debate, Andrew. Come on, yes. no, well, he, listen. He's just you, repeating a ten-minute monologue. He's already you, repeated in one of our debates. If you make an argument, you have to let him respond to the argument you did make. An well, argument. How much time are you giving us on these I'm arguments? I'm just giving him enough time to respond and finish his point. I let you tailor yours too. If you go back, watch the VOD, you'll see for yourself. Go ahead, Garland. Okay. So a vegan that walks outside and incidentally steps on a mic also is likely to have a bag of food with them. That bag of food is likely to contain gargantuan amounts of fruit. We don't feed fruit or, or fruit co-products or fruit, fruit byproducts. What's it called? Okay, what's it called? Maybe you need more coaching. If you're not going to be able to no, debate me one-on-one, on right one, this is what embarrassing. Is absolutely this is embarrassing for you. There are, okay. there is a, a large amount of the fruit industry, their, by, their cuttings and byproducts go towards, what, what towards, percentage? towards livestock. What so percentage? again, you're going to have to concede on that right what, off what, the bat. What percentage? You, you literally said fruit what is percentage? never fed. It, it does not matter. What you said it does, it does happen, matter. That it, it does, does not matter. If it's 1%, it matters. It's fed. It is what fed to, to livestock. Absolutely. Tons of fruit is fed to livestock. What percent? Doesn't matter, Garland. It's done. You just said it isn't ever. Did you, you feed fruit to your times. goats? You said you had concede, goats. Garland. No, I'm not going to concede. You always say biomass isn't worth anything. Biomass is worth a lot of money. There are biomass generators and all kinds of shit. They collect biomass like crazy. So, so how is how are you going to say something like that? Well, I, I can't say much with you continuing uh, interrupting me, Jeffrey. I mean, to be fair, Garland, that was that was an exchange, right? You guys were having a back and forth. But if you want to make a point, I, I think it's a great idea to do so. Let's try to throttle it back just a little bit, guys. Uh, Jeffrey, be be respectful of his time. I'll make sure he's respectful of yours. I know that uh, that you want to dive in because you don't feel like you're getting the answers you want. I get that. But just understand, I am being very fair with the time. Just throttle back a little bit. Let him finish his point. We'll get right to you. Okay? Go ahead, Carl. Okay. There may be some fruit byproducts that are sold, sold as animal feed. And maybe in some countries like Africa or something like that, I am absolutely sure that the percentage of any fruit-related <clears throat> co-product or byproduct is going to be very, very small compared to the co-products or byproducts from the like the soybean or the corn and in, corn industry. And so whenever a vegan walks outside and steps on a mic, that's incidental. But the fruit that's in his lunch bag is actually comes from an orchard. And those orchards are targeted by wild animals. Some of them are rabbits. Some of them are moles, voles, raccoons, field mice, all kinds of sentient creatures. 
And what they do is they put out rodenticides. They put out rodenticide bait stations. Usually in these days, they put out rodenticides that are anticoagulants. This causes the animal to bleed to death internally. That internal bleeding can last between three days and 14 days. So if you compare the suffering of one of these animals that have to intentionally die because of fruit, then over a two-week period, then that's about 2 million units of suffering beyond what a cow would experience in a slaughterhouse for every animal. All right, well then let's give Jeffrey plenty of time to respond. Go ahead, Jeff. I like how you pick out fruit and charity pick the fruit part, but that's for all crops, especially feed crops that go towards livestock garland. You are omitting so embarrassingly. It's like, I can't even, it's, it's like you're lying, dude. Like you've looked at all this stuff and you know that you're omitting all these things. Like you're, it's ridiculous. Like there's no point in us even doing this. A debate. If, if you're going to make a, an accusation like that, you need to back it up with proof. Proof that all the things you just said. Yeah. Proof, proof that we're not using, it, it, proof not that we're not using fruit? rodenticide, anticoagulant rodenticides and that those, and they prove use that, that they're incidental your and not intentional. You your cows. Proves Actually, that you they're incidental. Cows, I forgot you have goats you, all the time. You, you let people what you're think doing, you have cows for years. What you're doing then, is then you're then moving you the goalposts. And you're what you're doing Jason is you're moving the goalposts. You know that you didn't have cows. You're moving the goalposts. No, I'm not. Originally, just, you just said just all the deaths now. that we cause are incidental. And now we find out that they're intentional. And so you're trying to say, but you kill animals too. That's a two quo quay no, fallacy. We're talking about the numbers and percentages of the That's responsibility a two quo of the process, darling. You just employed a two quo quay fallacy. No, you're, you're, yes, you, you like that fancy little word you just had someone teach you last week, don't you? <laughs> check my, check my videos. I've been using that word for years. No. So. Yeah. <laughs> so the the wild boars garland you gonna concede on that you're gonna concede on something i gotta get you to concede on something i got something for you to There's concede too much on. stuff wow you're all right bro the yeah, fuck? what the fuck is this all right <laughs> get get somewhere both of you fuckers get somewhere. Get so we got we gotta wind this down. We got 20 minutes. Get somewhere. Get somewhere. Well, Garland, it. were you surprised to hear that Bill Gates owns more livestock than you do worldwide? Has spent billions about. of dollars on livestock. And 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 you say in, in public on a live stream that you didn't even know that he owned a single cow, but yet he's been for decades been spending billions on dollars, billions of dollars on on farming specifically for livestock all around the world yet you guys want to say that this guy's uh, uh promoting veganism when he's only promoting global warming and it's funny because like seven of the citations you sent me garland were were and uh, were uh funded by environmental groups that were connected to the bill and melinda gates foundation you haven't even looked through your own citations it's pretty funny so, like, what, what's what's the conflict of I interest love, with, with alcohol love, and data, Garland? I actually love when you mouth off like this. What, what's that. your what's your what's your uh, what's what's the conflict of interest if he owns millions of cows? How how is that a conflict of interest for your your argument, Garland? Andrew, check your uh, share. Andrew's screen. gonna have a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> i'm just here man okay but i i have to listen all right so it's... well no debate <laughs> happening can you share that screen with Garland us just, the, just won't won't answer any questions so this is from drovers tech billionaire bill gates continues to tout the consumption of synthetic beef where does it say he's countries. pushing veganism hey jeffrey shut your goddamn mouth for a where second is it, where so does it say speak. he's promoting veganism and because he owns part of a couple jeffrey companies shut your fucking beef, mouth so i does can not speak. invalidate all right all right, all right. For, for decades he's been spending billions on livestock around the world for decades can you prove that 
Yeah. Liar, liar. Can you prove it? <laughs> Lying vegan. Can you prove that? You're making statements that your ass can't back up. You liar. Yeah. You said you didn't even know he was involved in livestock, Garland. Okay. Tech billionaire Bill Gates continues to tout the consumption so of what? synthetic beef and shut what, your what goddamn power mouth. What do you have over you, Garland? Why are you so scared of Bill Gates? What power does he have over you? Where did he touch you? What is event? Where did he touch you, Garland? Aren't you more worried about the government Look up event who actually has power over us? Not some dorky fucking nerd rich guys? Garland, the government has control of us. The government spends billions on the meat and dairy industry. What are lobbyists? Like, hello? What are lobbyists? Everything in our world shoves the meat and dairy and industry down our our throats. Much, yet you guys think that do some lobbyists, dorky fucking do nerd lobbyists rich have guy, power? Do lobbyists, you guys, you're horrified of Klaus Schwab. You're are you going to cry again? Of Klaus Schwab and 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 Bill you're starting Gates. Starting to cry. And you again. call yourself a man. You're horrified you're starting, of these people. You're starting to cry again, Jeffrey. I'm, I'm starting to cry, Garland. No, stop crying. You should you should rewatch this video. I had you like shaking earlier, <sighs> bro. Wow. Dude, Answer to insane. something at least. <laughs> Answer okay. to something, Hang please. Uh, Hang on. I have to take a, a drink what? here to fortify what? myself. Hang on. Hang on. I have to take a drink here. I have to fortify myself for the rest of whatever the fuck this has turned into. Hang on. <laughs> One more. Let's uh, what conflict of interest? Let's try to there. bring this back in. I'm just <laughs> asking for, questions for the, for the love and not all answering any of them. Yeah, well, the thing is, is like there's a lot of back and forth, and when there's a lot of back and forth, I let the back and forth go. If you guys yeah, are actually crucible. asking for a little bit of time to make some points, I'm not going to let that go. Then I'll come in and break it up a little bit, but. You know, you guys, you guys have both uh, kind of jumped down each other's throats. It, it hasn't been one-sided, man. So, yeah. where do you want to take it? My the points are way more valid, the though. The floor sure. is yours, Jeffrey. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're muted again, bro. <laughs> what the Sorry. fuck? Okay. The, yeah. yeah. You derailed the whole the whole debate last time because of your bill gates stuff so what is the conflict interest what is the methodology that was used in our world and data that you don't agree with well are you denying that bill gates is saying that third world country third world countries should be eating meat and rich countries should be eating synthetic meat because that's what he's saying. I don't really care what he has to say. He's a he's a dorky nerd. I could probably kick the guy's ass. I don't know why you're so scared of him. Yeah, you're he has no guy. control over us at all. Garland, you realize that, right? Like the government has way more control over what we eat than Bill yeah, Gates does. Right. Garland. Bill Gates Yet you talk Bill about Gates him all day like you have a crush on him. Bill Gates has absolutely no control, but there's all of these things that we're not able to say on YouTube. Conspiracies. Him. Conspiracies oh, so, so, you use to trash people, good people. No, we can't get into I know. I already know where that's going. We can't get into it. You know that, Jeff. That's fine. We have TOS. That's fine. We can't. Well, I don't even I, like what's even going on now. You know, like you said, we're not we're off premise again. All right. Well, here's the thing. We got a ton of callers backed up. Now's a chance. If you want to call in, <laughs> let's do you it. Can call in. Uh, we also have uh, plenty of super chats to go through. If you want a super chat, it's a great time to do that too. We will get all your questions in. Uh, this was interesting to say the least. Didn't know it was <laughs> going to go that way. By the way, just not the tip bear sent in five crucible memberships. They just love Garland. I think they hate you, Jeffrey, but they love Garland. That's I, got, fine. I must no, admit. I put, I put I'm kidding. I'm joking, hated, bro. I'm Garland's a nice guy. Fun. He's just, uh, you know. Yeah. All right. All right. You need, you need anyway, some heat iron, my friend. Anyway, no, I want to give you guys. I don't, need, I don't need that carcinogenic fucking garbage. Uh, I, <laughs> you look like you, you actually. Garland, you, actually you, you know I could beat you. Hang in on, a bike Jeffrey, race. You know that, right? Jeffrey, you could you beat me. What? Far more in a bike race. Had, 
You had far more race. supporters. Bicycle race. Chat. You know that. Enough. I enough. I thought you were. Enough, I thought you were a cage enough. fighter. Come on, Andrew. I thought you were a cage enough. fighter. Jeez. I thought you were a cage oh. fighter, Jeffrey. I do a bunch of stuff. <laughs> well, then let's cage fight. I'm a lot more active. No. Than you. No, no, no the vegan cage, gauge, cage fight. fighting. No How vegan come all you guys want to Joey Schwartz wants to cage fight me too? No, you, <laughs> you're the one LA. that brought that up. I, I watched that. You're the one that brought that up. You're the one that brought that up. Admit it. I brought up a physical challenge. He said, let's fight. No, you said, let's oh, cage fight. He, I said, yeah, physical I did. I saw it. He said, I saw it. you're the one. Fight. You're the one and that I'll challenged go, oh, him. Mama, I'm 45 years old. How old are you? Yeah. You did the whole thing. You you yeah. made all of the challenges, but you're scared no, to challenge I, I, me I like that, aren't you? Physical challenge. Because I've got said, hem iron. Fight. I'll be stomping at <laughs> ass. All right, all Andrew, right. go ahead. All right. Well, well, thank thanks for giving me my show back here for a minute. <laughs> Appreciate it. But here's the thing: um, we do have to get into closings, and uh, I do want to give Jeffrey the last word. Uh, you each will have seven minutes for your closing. Uh, Garland Farms, you can go first. Uh, <laughs> It's been, been something. But anyway, uh, you're up first. You got seven minutes on the clock whenever you're ready. Go ahead. Okay. Again, Garland Farms has won against all of the vegans. <laughs> Primer, he's going to have to shut up. Yeah. Um, with This all started with the vegans claiming that all crop deaths were incidental. And Jeffrey even tried to make that claim today. But actually, the majority of crop deaths are not into incidental. They're intentional. Gunmen go out into the fields, and any animal that steps too close to an orange or a banana or a wheat plant is going to be shot in the face. It doesn't matter whether it's a feral pig or a beautiful white dove of peace or a swan or a cute little raccoon. They all get a bullet, and that's because of crop agriculture. And if you, if you force, violently force the entire world to go vegan, then we're all going to have to rely upon that system. Not only that, as I showed earlier with my graph, if you want to go back and look at that, that the grams of protein that will have to be replaced more than three times override the amount of protein that's currently be being produced by the destructive soybean industry. So the destructive soybean industry or something similar is going to have to at least triple under a vegan rule. And so this, uh, there, there's many things that the vegans have wrong. I think what's, what really defines veganism isn't, isn't a, love or concern for animals, but it's a hate for humanity. There's lots of vegans that in, in very high profile, all of the high profile uh, vegan activists have professed uh, extreme misanthropy, extreme hatred for mankind. And they also will tell you that veganism is not about health. So if you're watching right now, consider whether or not you want to take dietary advice from someone that absolutely hates the human race and claims that their diet is not about health. And with that, I yield the rest of my time. All right, short and sweet. Uh, Jeffrey, you have the last word. You, you seem like you're frozen on the screen though. No. Oh, no. Wait. <laughs> no. I was I was just looking funny. No way! You didn't you didn't just that wasn't just you 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 weren't frozen there. No, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I wasn't. Oh fuck! That's crazy. Okay, <laughs> go ahead. You got seven minutes on the clock. So, yeah, Garland was talking man. about health. Was, when we were was having a seizure. About health. Uh, <coughs> he said that, that we'd have to triple all that stuff to be vegan. But what we'd really have to triple is the amount of land used needed needed to do regenerative grazing uh, uh successfully we'd need three times as much land as we have access to that's why it's a pipe dream but yeah everyone just needs to go research what a co-product is what a byproduct is to figure out who won this and to go look up you know like all all the things i mentioned earlier um garland's just in denial he just uh he needs the and he's never going to change so there's really you know 
Like, I'm going to continue to do these things with him if he wants to, but there's really no point because the dude's not actually going to learn everything. And it's funny because originally we met for a couple hours and I was trying to make sure that, they, that Garland wanted to do a debate in good faith. And he acted very well and, and polite and nice in our, our, our first discussion um, to, to lead me to thinking that he wanted to do a, a, uh, a, a good faith debate. But clearly he doesn't. And um, so, you know, it, it's been fun. Thanks, guys. Like, it's been great. <laughs> I, I appreciate you, Andrew, for having us up here. I choose this panel because I know it's biased, and I like the, uh, I like the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 uh, I like being, I like things have being more difficult. Well, the, I think that the chat most certainly is biased, but I don't think the moderation is biased. You're, you're a little mean, bit more, mo you're a little bit more biased than you'd like to think, but it's not awful. I think that you're just a little bit worse of a debater than you'd like to think. Well, no, but that's I just me. That's debater. just me. I don't think I'm a good debater, though. <laughs> you're straw manning me. <laughs> I don't think Jeffrey, I'm a great Jeffrey, debater. You're the I master. Think a great debater to do this debate, like you know, Jeffrey, you're the master debater. Lying, he has never Look, even looked I, at I the. I just want. I want to let you. I want to let you. Be the for soybeans. Got, so I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you the God's honest truth. You won't believe me, but I'm going to tell it to you anyway. Before this debate happened tonight. I actually wanted to make sure that I was the most charitable towards your side that I could possibly be the most charitable. Right. And it, still, still the allegation of bias. And the thing is, like, I get it because I eat meat and shit like that. Right. And I'm I'm not going to back off. But understand that the Crucible actually has the most unbiased moderating on the Internet. And the reason for that is because I'm a far right crazy person. And we're the only ones who seem to be able to conceptualize alternative opinions and internalize them and do an internal critique. That's just me just saying, that's just yeah. what I think because I've been on hundreds of, well, not hundreds, I'm sorry, but I've been on dozens of debate shows and I've done hundreds of debates and, um, the leftists fucking suck, dude. They're the worst mods ever. <laughs> they won't even let an opinion on. dude. They won't even let them on. They just won't. So, uh, but I'm I am happy elected. that you came out. I understand it's always going to be, the allegation of bias, it's always going to happen. I get it. But I did have two questions, one for each uh, each person before we move into the call-ins. And I thank you guys both for coming on very much. Of course, we'll get your links down there. Um, the first one, I just had a very simple question for you, Jeffrey. Are you a pacifist? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm, I thought, I'm not, I not, not like I wouldn't, I wouldn't punch a motherfucker in the face. If, if you mean that kind of pacifist, like all the no, like I I, well, a pacifist defend. is like uh, when I say pacifist, think um, like Seventh Day Adventist won't pick up a weapon on the battlefield even if he's getting shot at. That's that's pacifism. No, absolutely no. not. You're not a pacifist. Okay, so no. It, it, does that end at what? Like maybe self defense or? Yeah, of course, <laughs> or defense okay. property. Uh, that you due, know, you can only you can only have like, as much um, property as you could defend. You know, yeah. Is that is that due to bodily autonomy or what? Bodily autonomy is that is that why you take that approach of like self defense only? You just superseded his vocabulary. No, like um, uh, you own you, and because you own you, of course, that's why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I was just curious about it. That's all. Uh, and then uh, Garland Farms. Um, I I did have a quick question for you. If you Barbecue the entire goat because I was I was reading about it. I've only ever had uh, like chunks of it. You know what I mean? I I've never heard of like the barbecuing of the whole Bacon. goat. What's the best seasoning? Do you think? Is it like a well, rub or what do you do? Well, you know I don't know that there's one rub that would cover the that would uh, cover all of the details. What I would recommend is. Of course, pick your favorite barbecue sauce, add a little bit of pepper because you want a little bite to it, and then add garlic. Garlic is fantastic uh, flavor enhancer for uh, goat, and a little bit of onion. Why are you eating, why are you adding vegan products to your meat? Well, it enhances the flavor. Those are, those are omnivores. Yeah, don't you products. think if we were supposed to eat meat, it would taste really good and you wouldn't have to put vegan products on it? You don't have to. Jeffrey, you had your moment in the spotlight. Now shut the fuck up. Yeah, you know, you know, like that's the thing. It's like, hey, 
you know, add any fucking salt to your salad or what? Come on. Anyway, go ahead, Garland. I just wanted to know. Just yeah, little little garlic, little onion, uh, some barbecue sauce, and some pepper. That's really all you need. What kind of? Okay, all right. You know what, Jeffrey? Here, the maximum charitability. What kind of salad dressing do you use to enhance the flavor of your fucking vegetables? What what is it? Is it Thousand Island or is it ranch? What is it? What is it? Balsamic. Yeah, see? Great you enhance balsamic. the flavor of your food too. You know? Yeah. <laughs> but you know, it would taste better with bacon. But anyway, I gotta get to the callers. <laughs> I, knew, ah. yeah, I knew someone would say bacon at some point. <laughs> well, you have to. You have to. Anyway, you, get you to admitted the earlier to to have eaten bacon in your life, Jeff. Shut up, Garland. All right, all right, all right. We gotta get to the callers. I'm sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> resident cooking channel. You've been waiting very patiently <laughs> in the background. By the way, you know he's a good cook. You can tell by the the size of the gentle. Uh, anyway, <laughs> go, go ahead. Whenever you're ready. <laughs> all right. I have a question for each of you, and I have a jab at Andrew. Um, so that you can both answer this one. What's your max bench? I'm a road cyclist. I don't bench. Ah, okay. I try and look like as much of a crackhead as possible because I'm an endurance cyclist. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> Arlen, okay, is it my turn? Yeah. <laughs> uh, right now, uh, probably about 275. Ah, very cool. Beast. <laughs> and uh, Andrew... Uh, to answer that question, I can only lift things that weigh as much as this beer. <laughs> oh, that wasn't my know. jab at you. My jab at you was about what you smoke. You made fun of the, the Gnostic guy last time for what he smokes. But listen, man, cigars, no filter? <laughs> Come on, man. Are you inhaling that? Yes. No, you're Aye. not. And here, oh. filter's gone. Does that make you feel better on a Marlboro Red? It does. It does. It does, does that make, make you feel better, you fucking Albanian bad? Get out of it here. Does. I, it does. Make you know, you this, it does make me feel better. He waited all this time. Yeah. Just for the, friend. Do you have, yeah. do you have yeah. a last follow-up? Do you have a last follow-up? Hey, I have a no, question uh, for Resident Cooking Channel. What did you have for breakfast? Oh, what did yeah? I have? No. Uh, today, I mean, it was Sunday. I don't eat breakfast on Sundays. I go. To okay, bed. well, you stop playing games. Tell me what you eat for breakfast regularly. <laughs> Garland's pissed. Gar Garland. Uh, is it plant based or meat based? It's usually meat based, but it's the fast for us, so I can't have meat. It's I'm orthodox for the for the majority of the fast. Are you trying to portray that you eat mostly meats? Yes. Oh yes, I do. <laughs> Garland, calm down. You got down, the starch bro. face. You got the starch face, buddy. Starch. <laughs> What's that? Uh, yeah, what is that? What is what is that? Thing? I don't get. I don't know what that means. What that means is you you eat a lot of starch and sugar. You know you do. Oh no, I've actually cut out sugar completely. I haven't had sugar since when? Months. Yesterday? Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You okay? I'm, I'm not. I'm trying to lose weight, man. How much I'm, weight I'm have you lost? How much weight have you lost since you cut the starch? I'm about 20 pounds down. Thank you for asking. You're, okay, so you've lost 20 pounds since you cut the starch. Yeah. Okay, so so before that, you were primarily starch and sugar based, correct? Uh, no, I was. It was mostly meat based, but because I had a, a, a too, um, I had a lot of carbs in the diet. It was it was a lot of very bloating. It's not very good for me. My I can my favorite. That. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, okay, so let me just counter this narrative real quick, okay? Uh, with, with a question for Garland Farms. Would you rather he look like he looks, or would you rather he look like Jeffrey looks? With, like, if you had to choose. No, I mean, I would rather him be a human being than, uh, you know, like a vampire or a zombie. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> I live in a very cold state, man. I go outside, I don't get burnt. <laughs> there's so no funny. there's no sunlight over here <laughs> <laughs> the roast of fucking resident sleeper that's okay great I'm friend by the way thank you so much for calling in i appreciate course, it very much have a great night <laughs> and then i cut him off like a dick what's wrong with me 
Chris Hines, you've been waiting patiently in the background. Thank you so much for your call in. Hey, Go ahead great to see you again. How's it going? Good. Good. Garland, why'd you block Chris Hines? Yeah, why'd you block me, Garland? Because, uh, because I kept debunking you with your own studies. Was that why? Are you going to let me answer? You're going to. Well, I'm just say the fact and then let you are you going to let me answer? You're going to continue to bloviate right like your other vegan colleagues. Not being triggered. Oh, so go and carry on. Well, the same question could be asked of uh, David Rams. Why did he block me? Well, this isn't anything to do with David Rams. This is to do with me. No, no, you and David Rams are buddies. If David's going to oh. block me, then I'm going to block all him and all his buddies. You blocked me way before David Rams even involved. Like, oh, so anyway. you admit that he you admit that he blocked me. I don't know. Right? If he did. Who cares? I'm talking about me. Oh, who cares? Really? Well, then I'll tell you what. Why if, did you block you, me? You can, Actually, this isn't my can... question, Andrew, just for the record. Okay, I have got a genuine question. This is just... Uh... Well, you better get to it fucking quick. Okay, right. Let's get to the question. Right. So let's talk about co-products because I think people need to realize how important and this is if um these products um soy a meal is a co-product that means that animal agriculture has to take responsibility for the damages and the deaths along with the oil so let's look at some quotes from some of the um soy organizations shall we so for example we have got let's have a look the national american soybean association who says soybean oil is a co-product of the protein and meal production we here we go back to the semantics this is a semantic. these two important and valuable Garland. Why? Oil and protein are called co-products. I've got a video here. Mac Marshall, the VP of Market Intelligence for the United Soybean Board, saying it's a co-product. We've got U.S. Soy. Why soybeans are grown primarily for soy meals value in livestock, soybean oil serves as a co-product. Why are you denying this? And the reason you are denying it is because you don't want to take responsibility that livestock are also causing crop deaths. So no, will Chris. you concede... Considering I've got all the evidence Shut from your every fucking mouth board, for a second and I will answer your product. question. Hold on. And one last thing. You even said on no, your live let me answer stream, one at a time and I'll let you get to it. This question. is the finishing. Oh, this is the no, finishing. Shut your mouth and oh, let, let me answer. Okay, you can answer. And I'll let you get to the second one. All right. Sure. Okay. The reason that I'm denying that it's a co-product is because a the def definition does not fit. A co-product and a byproduct are two different things. A byproduct and a co-product are defined by the processing, the manufacturing process. Mm -hmm. How are soybeans processed? Through a soybean oil expeller. And what a comes up the other side of that machine? Oil. Soy meal. It's a soybean oil expeller. Are you denying that it's a soybean oil expeller? You can literally go online and see that there is one. Chris, are you denying that it's a soybean oil expeller? It depends. There is a, Chris, are you okay? Can you link us to a soybean meal expeller? Yes, yeah, sure. Garland. Why does <laughs> okay, this matter to the it. argument? Shut up, Jeffrey. I'm talking to Chris. Why this matters to the argument? How soybean Chris, show us a soybean meal expeller. Oh, I'm about to look. If you want me to have a look, hold on. Soy so take the fat out. Fat it. Meal production. Right. That's um, machine. That's exactly, problem. because the fat. The meal, the the raw soybean for forage is too fattening, uh, so they got a oil extractor. Oh, there, there's a video. Let me just answer, yeah. Jeffrey. Shut your pie hole. Um, I don't know. I'm just trying to. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've, I've got a whole video here. I mean, should, should I just link I've it? Got in a whole the video. Program? Yeah, I've got 250 videos that debunk. Yeah, and they're all garbage. Back there's a video here. Memory. It's literally one machine. It all comes out of one part. The meal comes out. Yeah, of the it's other. called a soybean oil extractor. Yeah, and, they, and it does both color. things, right? It, it gives it's you a soybean oil. oil. It's a does soybean it give you oil, oil expeller. Does it give you meal? It's oil? a soybean oil expeller. I don't care what the name is. Does it give you meal? It expels the oil. And the meal. And the main product and the, and is, there's the, another, is the meal. And then there's another layer of processing called hexane oil extraction. Same machine, right? Hexane. No, not the same oh, machine. Oh, yeah, the same machine. Look at the link. It, it, you, first, you have to, first you squeeze them. Then you Garland, soak them look in at hexane. Garland, could, could I just say, I've literally link, just, I literally just quoted all the major soybean boards saying it's a co-product, right? You, you were saying, oh, the National Soybean Association, right? They haven't even got a website. Where's the website for him? I tried to Google it. <laughs> Show me the link. I'm waiting. Come on. What, what link are you wanting me the to National show you? National Soybean Association. You say, say it's a byproduct. Where's this link? You never showed it. Yes, I did. Where? I showed it. Didn't I, Andrew? Did you I see it, Jeff? It? Did anyone see it? I didn't see it. Open your he eyes. He My eyes are open. A lot of links. If you look through the private chat, but I'm, I couldn't tell you which one. 
might be referencing or not referencing what he's If anyone can reference it in the chat, I would love to see it. I would love to see, considering I've got every other major soybean thing here, including the, including the National American Soybean Association, clearly saying it's a co-product. Now, the, different, the thing is, which is the funny thing I was going to bring up, sure. you in your live stream I'm the going, other day clearly I'm said to, I was the first person. It. Hold on. You said clearly I was the first person to ever say that soy meal was a co-product. Then afterwards, you looked all confused and you had to Google the difference between a byproduct and a co-product because you didn't even know what it was. So you can't sit because here. You're playing, oh, semantic, you're playing semantic. You're playing semantic games. The no, audience, not, knows, the important. audience knows that it doesn't matter. Garland, no, the our last debate, you evidence. didn't even know what a co-product was. A That's you didn't even bring up the word co-product last debate. As a waste of and as a negative. That is what a byproduct is. A co-product is a product which is made in conjunction with the Andrew. other one. Hold value. Andrew, which check is your uh, meal and share oil screen. If the meal goes, the oil. Relax. Hang on. Hang on. He wants to respond, and I've given you a lot of time to talk here, caller. Let him respond. Yeah, sure. No, you can stop me whenever. All that's right. absolutely fine. <laughs> okay, so there's uh, there's one. Yeah, this is soy. This is science direct. This isn't the science soy direct. association. Okay, there are so dude, many links. Dude, that say dude, I'm not finished. Okay, carry on, carry on. There's the National Institutes of Health. Okay, soybean meal is a byproduct. There's okay, you, 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 you take that for what you will. Uh, hey, shut up for a second and let me answer. Garland, you got to admit those aren't are all good the same. Vacations. You don't want the truth to be revealed, so you try to talk over people. You aren't showing the truth, you're Garland. Revealing, you're revealing you're omitting your dishonesty. The truth. Let him Here's finish. Another. Let him. Holy advanced shit, feed him. additives. Here's advanced feed additive. Soybean meal. Those aren't institutes for soy research, soy Garland. Oil extraction. Here's another one. Oxford. You're a big fan of Oxford, aren't you, Jeffrey? Aren't you a big fan of Oxford? You you'd be you'd be down on your knees about Oxford. You quote Oxford. Soybean all the time. meal is a byproduct. Soybean meal it's Oxford. Oxford says soybean meal is a byproduct of the soil extraction, soy oil extraction process. I mean, how many how many Sources do you require? Okay, how about the vegans? Aren't, no, aren't Can I, oh, hang on. The oh, gentlemen, gentlemen, here. relax. Hang on. All of you guys, calm down. I did want to take a look at this one link that you put in here, uh, Mr. Hines. You put in a YouTube link, and you said that this demonstrated two or a single machine, which did both of those actions. Yeah, I don't okay. see the I don't see the singular machine doing both of those actions anywhere in this video. Can you show me what the timestamp is for that, Mr. Hines? Um, okay, let's have a look. I mean, you, you to bear with oh, yeah, it, so it kind of says here. So if you go to like two, no, it's damn it, shows clearly two separate machines one that does one extraction, the other one that does another type of mechanism. What does this matter, this Andrew? Machine. It says here, you got step well, because three. the claim from Mr. Hines, he said, take a look at this link. Which yeah, I hold did. on, it's got step three, the mechanical oil production, and then it goes uh -huh. to step four. Oil yeah, production. So those are all you hear those same so, machine. So hang on, machine. so those are all mechanical separate Mechanical oil production. It's one big machine, you can see it. If you go to like... No, well, no, it's not. It's one big machine. machine. On, it's a mechanical Andrew, oil are you a moderator or are you machines? helping out? The debate's, the debate's <laughs> over in this gentleman... Oh, okay. If it, can I just clarify enough. something? Hang on, hang on. Mr. Hines, Hines, like, Mr. Hines, we want a two against one situation. Listen to what I'm saying. It's very important. The video that you just showed. So I'm a robot, a, a robotics mechanic. That's what I do. Yeah, yeah. This is showing multiple different machines, and then they put them together on an assembly line. But it's not the same machine. No, but the thing is, what I'm trying to say, right? Let's just uh, let's just clarify this, right? Ultimately, uh -huh. it doesn't matter if it's one oh, machine, two machines. Hold on, Garland. Shut up. It doesn't matter. That, that's not the point. The point is that both of these products are being made together, whether it's one machine or two machines, whatever you want to argue. And they both hold value, which is what makes them a right. That's what I've always point. said. Hold on. No. <laughs> links you provided are just random links of other things. All no, the they're not. Open. They're not hold random on. links. Hold on. Let me finish. Oxford? You think hold Oxford is on. a random hold link? On. Garland. Stop. You're a big fan of Oxford. Garland, you always say you want to speak. Let me speak. Every single um, reference I gave you for co-product was a soy association. Every single one of them. All the ones you were doing were just random things, everything like that. I will completely concede to the fact that um, soy meal and soy oil are sometimes referred to 
as byproducts because they are generally mislabeled because it's not important in that sense with what they're saying. They're just trying to say that it is a part of it. Okay, but then in, in your mind, industry what, itself, what differentiates a co-product from a byproduct? Industry product. itself recognizes it's a co-product. No, the industry, I showed earlier that the Soybean Association Board was calling it a byproduct, so not the entire... And, on. and, and just to add to this, you gave me a huge list in a this? comment once to say that it's not important and everything. And basically, I've got everything. This is actually I've pretty incredible, this video. I Because I, I, I wasn't familiar with this particular process. Like, I don't know anything about this. I just know how machines operate. But this this is quite the process. This is taking many machines, including grinders. Uh, and you have shakers. You have yeah. multiple motor mechanisms. That's what I mean, manufacturing this is, is called. Yeah, what processing is called. These are like all major processing involved. But you're talking yeah. you're talking about tons of different machines in this process. But they yeah, do one thing. I mean. You can't just they say it's no, but, but they don't. But that's that's the thing. They they don't do one thing. They, they all split do the a product separate in function in every single one of them. Mm. Right. And this is what and I mean. It, like if it was a waste nope. product, it would just be the crap that comes out the other end. This is really being processed for a reason. Six hundred dollars a ton. Right what I was now. saying about the links you sent me, Garland, pretty much all of them say the uh, historically soy um, meal has been the driver of this. And this is from your own links. I'm happy to send them all to you. Historically, meal prices have been the main driver of soybean values. Soybean meal has been a steady hand of the wheel for demand for many years. Soybean meal used, uh, used to be used so plentiful decades ago that restaurants, food manufacturers, and other industries couldn't use it all. Like, these are your links. These are just quotes from your links. Chris, you know, I don't know why you're denying this. And the only reason you are denying it is because you don't want to admit that animal agriculture... Chris, you have to let me speak at some point. That's all it is. That's yeah, the issue. Let him, you have to let, let me speak at some point. Chris, let him get in real quick. Sure. Okay. Originally, this, this whole thing started. This Garland Farms versus all the high top-tier vegans started with the, the top-tier vegans claiming that all of the crop deaths were on the shoulders of animal agriculture because the, never you're going to have to shut your mouth, Chris, and let me speak. <clears throat> okay, but I didn't say that. <coughs> Straw man farms over here. <laughs> you, were you were claiming that the entire crop death situation was the result of animal agriculture. And you illustrated that by claiming that 80% of the soybeans are grown to feed livestock. And what I did was and what I did was I illustrated the fact, and it doesn't matter whether you want to call it a byproduct, a co-product, was that was that 92% of the world's soybeans were actually processed to extract the oil through mm -hmm. soybean oil expellers to separate the oil from the meal. Yep. And the livestock consume 98% of the meal and humans consume right now 2% of the meal and human beings consume 100% of the oil right now the oil is going for between 85 and 90 cents per pound and the meal is going somewhere between 10 and 15 cents per pound mm -hmm. and so whether it's a whether it, this is a semantics game that you're trying to play to try to cloudy the picture for the public, whether it's a co-product or a byproduct doesn't matter. The fact is that they're making a product. They're making a profit on both. I will agree with that. It, Mr. They're Mr. making Mr. a Hines, profit. I'm, I'm actually confused though. So okay. I, I was trying to figure. Maybe you can clarify this for me. Sure. So I don't know anything about any of this shit. I know it's a bit of a weird subject. Just, just so you understand, like I don't know anything, uh, but I do. I do know machinery really well i understand philosophy pretty well i think i think that your point for your definition was to state that the reason you think this isn't a byproduct and is a co-product is because it's all produced on a singular machine that was your initial argument but that's no, that, that, but that, that's, that's absolutely not true i mean no, I've, that's, now that's counted, I've now counted i think eight machines just as i've watched this video <laughs> including shakers different processing mixers the whole nine yards is that actually critical to your definition, or am I no, wrong? not no, the amount of machines doesn't make any difference. What, what it is is the the fact that soy oil and soy meal is produced at the same time. Now it doesn't matter how that system runs, what what have me and machines or anything. Both Andrew, product, both products are created at the same time. It's not that's like, really weird because 
if you can have one product that's created as an excess of another product, and we would call that byproduct. Yeah, you wouldn't say so you would. You would incorrectly call it byproduct. That's the I, thing. That would be a completely. We've just gotten well, used to saying the word byproduct yeah, for on, everything, but there's actually yeah. co-product, yeah, and it's on, very maybe, important to distinguish which is which. Let me say something real quick: is that you can see how much the vegans actually care about the animals that they'll tie up a debate about the harmful effects of crop agriculture. Garland, uh, to, I've already proved by, to you that by, everything by, I, mix, I love wrong. this shit, right? I love by mixing them up, by about mixing us, by, by hog tying us into a argument about you semantics. think wild hogs are are, a, are an argument against oh, vegans in the United right? States? You, you, you've, are, you've already, Jeffrey, you already admitted that you've eaten bacon. So shut up. I never admitted that I was vegan since birth, so I, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, well, anyone that's, well, that's, well, that's, well, that's eating pork well, has a responsibility maybe, for you guys, both you All guys, right, you next. Have Jeffrey and Chris, just help me out with this, because I'm, 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 I'm trying to figure this out. By the way, the audience has been confused half this debate, because what, what's happened is this, just, just so everybody on the panel understands right now, is that you guys had former arguments that this audience is not aware of. And so you jump into those arguments. You're very aware of them. But just understand the people who are watching externally are like, what the fuck are these guys talking about? Right. As we've gone, I've tried to clarify it as much as I can so that we can get some type of grasping. But it seems well, the debate like is fun. supposed to be between two people, not an audience and, and a diff two people. It's supposed to be what we talk about. And it doesn't matter what the audience thinks, especially if there's been two debates and they're yeah, cloudy about that. That just means they missed the last well, debate. Not, and why, why would I need to change my argument to for people watching? Well, the, the, the clarification is not for them. It's for me. Right. So I want to make sure that I know what the fuck is going on. So I'm curious about this particular point. And it's it's very odd to me. Because it does seem like it is semantics, and I do agree that semantics are very important, but in your definition of byproduct, what are you stating a byproduct is exactly? Okay, so um, basically is, a byproduct is a residual waste. I mean, yes, you can use it. You, know, you can sell it to make extra money. You're muffled it. very badly right now. Oh, sorry. Is, is it better if I move There we go. Perfect, perfect. Okay, let, let me turn it down a little bit. Maybe I'm just... No, no, you're right. good. You're good. Just wherever Get you're close sitting. Your mic. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, no problem. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so um, obviously one of them is uh, just a residual uh, waste product. With a with a co-product, it's actually a part of the, the, the market driver. Like soybean meal has actually been um, historically the main driver, the main reason. Yeah, why is a byproduct a waste product? But why is a byproduct a waste product? Because it's something that's, you know, I mean, like examples would be like sawdust, um, you know, manure, like things yeah, that, that are would kind be of, like, a waste product. It's yeah, that would be right. that, that, oh, it's something you that, that would be a byproduct. A byproduct is, and it's not, but it's not waste yeah. because even even manure yeah, has waste, value. Though. That's that's why that's why I'm asking about this definition specifically. Yeah, I'm very confused about it. Maybe so. Could so for instance, could a co-product? Couldn't a co-product be a byproduct? No, they, they're, they're one. They're one of the, a, by, a byproduct can become a co-product if there is a a market enough for it. Um, I know. Well, I know it's really that saying confusing. the same thing. No, no. I know it's a really. Yeah. Thing, but basically, what it is is once it becomes a co-product, the um, for example with soy, it's one of the reasons that soy is being grown now. It's not just the waste from it. It becomes a part of why that um, item exists. Because people no, actually, are demanding a, a byproduct, the meal, a byproduct, as the oil. Shut a up, Carlin. So it acts a as by, it, and it no, also no, acts as a no, you, you, just, you don't like what you're hearing because you're scared guys, because if you bunk you, Carlin. So I understand it better. But let's say, let's say uh, to your example, uh, sawdust. We had a sawmill. Yeah. We would agree that the product of the sawmill was like, let's say, two by fours. So that's what they're producing. A byproduct of the two by four production is this sawdust, right? But it turns out that they could bag that sawdust and send it to some energy company that does some type of sawdust, does slow burn, or they make mold out of it or some bullshit that we don't fucking know about, right? Sure. They sell this, and this ends up actually making them more money than the actual product they were making before. Are you claiming that that's what makes it a co-product, or is it, it still would a become, byproduct? It yeah. would become a co-product once it takes over that you know majority of the profit. If there becomes a demand Why? for that item, if there becomes a demand, because that's how it is. <laughs> yeah, well, if, I, if that's not an. That, I don't. That's doesn't answer. You're, you're, you're questioning the industry right now. 
Yeah, let, let, me, let me try and clarify. So basically, once there becomes enough of a demand for a product where it can literally drive the production purely on that individual product. So, so for example, with soy meal, it's been so heavily demanded that it is drive, you know, it's literally driven the production of soy. Mm. Then it's literally become as Notice how it changed from driving to driven? Because right now, now what's so driving garland, is now that I, being oil. Hang on, Garland, oh. Garland, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. I'm trying I'm to explain, done. Andrew, so we understand. But now I get it. Now I get it. So now, now, now that I understand your methodology, mm -hmm. let's assume for a second that that sawdust only accounted for, let's say, 8%. Then would it be a byproduct? Well, it still can be. Like oil, for example, is only uh, 10%. So, that's the no, so, then, the so, then it's, so then by your definition, this, this, these soybeans would be byproducts, like Garland said, right? Well, no, how, how, would, how did you work that out? I'm saying well, because he said, the oil he said, would be, because if he claimed, the oil would be, right? If I'll the oil explain was it to you. Percentage. Hang on, I'll explain it to you. This is your logic. Let's follow your logic train. Andrew, how much longer are you going to do Are you going to stay on this? I'm going <laughs> to stay on it until I understand it. So we this start one. at once the product becomes the overage, meaning that now the product that was before the byproduct now is making you more money. Now it's the main product. That is the thing. Now it's a co-product. However, this would necessarily entail that as long as it's at some below average to whatever that major product is, it would have to necessarily be a byproduct. Am I so wrong? What it is, no, no. So what it is, so basically, think about it this way, right? If soy meal stopped, if all demand for soy meal stopped, the market for the oil would rise considerably because it relies on both of the products to be sold. That is how kind of the market is run. And the same if the oil went, then the meal would suffer. So these products are both, they're both linked now. They literally, they rely on each other to Yeah, to but exist that's not the, what your definition Chris a question? is. That's weird. Yeah, but I'm trying to explain that this is part can of I ask Chris? I, I need to just ask come Chris back and explain it. Explain it's to me not that weird, yeah, yeah, Andrew. You're, you're just understand. not I'm trying to gonna... understand it. Can yeah. I ask Chris a question? Crystal clear. Jeffrey, Jeffrey, not only do I understand it, right? But on Chris Hines' definition, I would absolutely destroy his face because it makes no it's sense. And it's not his definition. Stupid. It's the industry yeah, 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 yeah. definition. I don't care. Andrew. Listen, listen. If the definition is... You should the, care. If the definition is the X factor has to be less than the profit of the primary product, and, he, and Garland has demonstrated that the excess is less than the profit of the primary product, then it's a fucking byproduct by his definition, you moron. No, what it means is that both, <laughs> this is what I mean, you don't understand it. You don't understand you can, it. Yeah, well, I've been sitting you here asking have, questions uh, and every time I do, you guys say, what, what's wrong? Why are you asking the question? Because I want to so know. So that would only be the case is if, if the byproduct was worth so little that it wasn't up there competitively. Oh, so little, what do you mean? The what, what? Garland said it's, it's, hey, it's 50, 40, 50, 149. Yeah, it's not 50, does it doesn't become like a co-product. Can I try and make this really you simple? You aren't taking into consideration yeah, the it. byproduct oh, part. Let me, let me it's it's at what percent profit well, on, does it become a co-product? Colin, can I just try and explain this to Andrew? At, Chris, at what percent profit does it become a co-product? That's what, what I want to know. There's a thing called an EFA, I think, reading. Basically, if when it becomes that the market relies on both to be profitable, then that is where the, the kind of level is. So it, it depends. I couldn't tell you where it is. I mean, okay, it, source it's, that. Source it. I mean, I, we can find You're, you're bloviating, but you're not oh, sourcing I'm anything. Explain, I'd explain it to please. I'm going on. I want to try and explain. You're making claims that you can. can we move along, Andrew? Yes, we can. We hang Thank on. you. We, we can. But the thing Jeffrey is, Jeffrey wants is to move on. He's just getting this. Shut up, dude. Like the, the we'd color, be getting, we'd be moving along. You're getting school. Stop, stop, stop. All you guys stop. Just listen. This is, this is why it's important, right? So if I was in Garland shoes or in your shoes, if you're going to make it semantics, it's very important if you want to make semantical arguments that you flesh these definitions out so we can understand what the fuck you're talking about, right? This whole time, I've been trying to get that done. I've been trying to just figure out what the fuck are these guys talking about? Let's make sure we know what they're talking about. In this particular case, I had no idea most of this time what the fuck was, was yeah. even going on. So um, maybe you need to do some trying. independent information, like so, research or something. In a really easy way. Can I try to hang, on, hang, on, hang on, I was trying. So now that Andrew's I got, not the, finished. Vegan, now that shut I got up. the definition down, now that I understand it, 
either of you are welcome to come back with that definition, God help you, um, whenever you'd like. And Chris Hines, uh, would you would you like to, um, you know, shout your channel out, anything like that before you go? Um, I mean, you can do. Um, I haven't really uploaded much for a while, but yeah, it's just Chris Hines on YouTube. Uh, yeah. Feel free All to right. come and say hi. I haven't really. Hey, but yeah, yeah, if no. you want to chat about it another time, we can we can do. Like, Happy to do it, Chris. Have a good day. Yeah, sorry to confuse you, man. <laughs> I, I, well, I'm I'm not confused now. Now I understand. Uh, Corinth, uh, go ahead with your question whenever you're ready. Um, for Garland Farms, when you're talking about how um, animal death is going to be a byproduct of soy farming and things like that. Um, if we removed soy farming in that, do you think we'd have less or more animal death and just went towards a pure um, carnivore or more carnivore? You're, you're talking about a change in crop agriculture? Uh, yeah, if we change the crop agriculture and stopped producing soy oil for humans, do you think we'd have more or less animal death if we change that sort of like production and soy food for humans as well and we move that towards pure animals does a change in crop agriculture allow a change in livestock agriculture um it's going to necessitate that right since we're using soy meal as a way to feed the animals how much uh, soy is used to feed cattle um from what i've seen it's i'm not sure off the top of my head actually uh, you seem like you know the number better than. No, me. give us give us a number since you 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 seem to uh, pretend that you know. I just explicitly said I don't know this number. You okay, if you don't if you don't know these Garland, numbers, Garland, just answer. You, this, this is why I'm asking you this question, number. Garland, has nothing to do with his um, opinion of of what no, the numbers are. Just answer the question: Does it go there's, up or does it go there's down? More, there's more variables, Jeffrey, than what he's. Does it go up or does it go down? In your opinion, Jeffrey, we have to know why. More do, why are you incapable? Why are you doing debates if you're incapable of answering questions, Garland? Why do you waste your time? Why do you waste everyone's time? I mean, we're we're glad you do it because you make an example of yourself. But like, why do you do it if you're not going to answer questions? I'm you haven't an you dodged of every myself? question asked to you up here. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. So Garland, I also didn't specify cattle. I just said animal agriculture, right? So when you're trying to shift it to cattle, I feel like you're also leaning towards this, like. Broader animal agriculture. Um, are we going to have a shift in that if we shift off of soy production? Are we going to have a shift in animal agriculture if we ship, uh, shift off of soybean production? Yeah. Well, I think that if we, if we shut down soybean production, then we can, right now, we've got uh, all studies all scientific studies that have studied the what's happening to the topsoil as a result of the tillage that's required for soybean agriculture, uh, the tillage actually calls, uh, causes wind and rain erosion. And so this erosion is happening at, happening at such a rate that they're predicting that we have around 60 years of topsoil left before we all run out of topsoil and we can't even grow uh, anything. We, we won't be able to grow any uh, vegan foods if we continue to till the soil. And so if we were to shut down soil soybean agriculture, then we can actually move in uh, regenerative rotational grazing ruminants and other animals like uh, chicken chicken tractors and uh, anything that will increase and improve the the soil uh, biome and improve the soil life and increase the soil carbon, then we would be able to reverse the damage that's being caused by the crop agriculture that is producing the items that are on the vegan menu. And so if we could uh, get rid of soybean agriculture, then yeah, we could take that acre, that acreage and start to regenerate it with livestock. I'm sure that would have been a great answer if that was anywhere near my question. So my question again was, are we going to have more animals dying or less animals dying if we change off of soybean agriculture? Well, the soybean agriculture 
uh, is responsible for a large portion of the oceanic dead zones. In fact, I can link you to the U.S. government explaining that 50% of the oceanic dead zone is caused by the uh, soy and uh, soybean and corn crops, and only 10% is caused by livestock. And so, Again, yes, I'm sure this would be a great answer if that was my question. So one more time, will we have more? Are, are you claiming, are you, wait, are you claiming, are you claiming that, are you claiming that oceanic dead zone does not kill animals? Uh, if they're already dead, we're not going to be killing more, right? If they're already dead, we're not going to be killing more. So you're saying that uh, creating 95,000 square miles of oceanic dead zone is to be excused because you're a vegan? Uh, are we creating it or is it already been created? Because like, I don't think we have it's, time. It's an that. ongoing, it's an ongoing disaster caused by crop agriculture. Uh, so then we'd have to do the weighing of the calculus between, is this going to be more sentient life that's going to be dying versus things like pigs and chickens, which are being fed by these soybean products, which are highly sentient, which are going to be highly weighed, right? Okay. So you can, like like a football game, you can tell who won the football game by looking at two scores, correct? Uh, yeah, you can tell. Okay, so what's the score on Oceanic Dead Zones? Uh, if it was a Corinth, football what game, is the score for Oceanic be Dead like... Zones? Answer the question, what is the score for Oceanic Dead Zones? How many um, animals are killed? I'm the vegan. Why are you the one so no, answer the question, Corinth? You're not Corinth, able to you give me a number. For like 30 days. Come on. <laughs> I Come on. Give us a number. Been waiting for that line for weeks. Cor buddy. Corinth, you're, give you're, us you're a number. A vegan poon, and now you're a fucking vegan. <laughs> I've been you waiting. That shit. That Corinth, you sick. cannot give us a number. Is it uh, because of apathy? <laughs> because it's Is not it a hypocrisy? football game, Garland. <laughs> Is it stupidity? Is it misanthropy? What is it? It's a metaphor, Garland. It's not going to output a well, number. Don't start crying. Don't start crying like Jeffrey I'm did laughing. earlier. I'm crying laughing because Resident Sleeper had me dying earlier. I'm sorry. Yeah, you are. All right. All right. Did you have anything to follow that up with? Uh, yeah, so we're going to make it do... quick. Make it okay. quick. I'll uh, make it really uh, quick. Gains right behind you. We need to do a lot of really advanced uh, numbers to do this. So just using like, if it were simple, what would the numbers be? That's a uh, what if situation. That's just not going to be able to be answered by the parameters. Okay. I'm going to have to employ a Hank Hill. What is that goob gobbledygook you just said? Uh, I said that you're Open. using a metaphor that's not going to be applicable in this situation because it's a lot more confusing. I'm sorry, I'll go down to monosyllabic words. If you're if confused, you, you need to move on. Damn it, you're... Corinth. Damn it. Why couldn't you just use plain language, boy? <laughs> <laughs> Propane products. <laughs> Propane accessories. Yeah, get the hell off my program, Propane and Propane accessories. <laughs> hey, he does it way better than no, us. Holy no, shit. Hang on. The thing is, is... I don't know. Maybe maybe people here, maybe there's vegans in the chat who've never been on the crew. It's hard to believe at this point, but Damn it, you Bobby. realize that once the debate's over, the moderator can participate, especially when callers are coming in. And I often do, and so does Zen, the other moderator. That's what makes the crucible the fucking crucible. Uh, vegan Gains, you've been waiting hey. very patiently in the background. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. Go ahead. The floor is yours. <laughs> Yeah, so I wanted to correct two mistakes that Garland Farms made. Uh, the first mistake he made was he claimed uh, vegans have trouble getting an adequate amount of uh, particular amino acids, even from uh, very high quality protein sources like soy. Soy uh, has a full complement of amino acids. Um, it is also um, high in methionine. And if you look at any Ooh, research on things like nitrogen balance, um, as you don't even really need to consider amino acid ratios, um, as long as protein is matched, uh, vegans actually um, have the same intercept when it comes to nitrogen uh, positive nitrogen balance as meat eaters. And if you look at like hard he uh, health outcomes like sarcopenia in the elderly. Um, you'll see that it doesn't matter what the protein source is so long as uh, total protein intake is matched. So elderly people who are at risk of losing muscle because of age-related reasons, 
they will have the same amount of muscle mass regardless of protein source so long as their protein intake is matched. Um, and by the way, you said that your max bench is uh, 275. Uh, mine's 380. So uh, I don't know what your uh, excuse is there. <laughs> and secondly, you also claimed that if we were going to move to a completely plant-based food system, we'd have to produce uh, far more food uh, or like have more plant agriculture. That literally violates the laws of thermodynamics um, by claiming that we produce more food by feeding the plants we grow to animals than eating the animals. You're claiming that energy is being created, which is impossible. Um, and you can look at chapter five, page 76 of the UN's latest climate report. Uh, they reported that we would be able to feed the population that would be expected to exist by 2050. Uh, if we move to a, a completely plant-based food system and we would be able to use less land than we currently use today, uh, use Cornell University land? also did a very similar analysis where if we got rid of all animal agriculture, we'd be able to feed uh, 800 million more people. Okay, so that last part was an appeal to authority without any source no. or anything like that. I, I if gave I, if you the I source. Can, no, 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 you need to shut your mouth, vegan gains, for a second. Uh, if you're going to quote some type of authority without giving us a, uh, you know, a source and letting me examine the source, then it's nothing more than appeal to authority. Yeah, so I, so I gave you, you the source. That, it's you chapter lose five, that, you page lose 76 of passes. the UN's latest climate report. The next, you the can next look one, up that vegan source. gains, is, is how old are you and what do you do for a living? I am turning 32 in a few months, and um, I yap online for a living. Okay, when I was 32, I was benching 405, okay? Oh, okay. Is there any video and, footage and right of that? Right now, I'm, I'm 54 years old. I'll be 55 this year, and I'm benching 275. Yeah, yeah so, so let's see you, um, let's see you no in 20 you years and see what you can less. do. Little, so, sorry, 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 sorry. There's no reason you should be benching less. At the age of 55, there's well, no yeah, age there is a reason why, why I bench, bench less, less is because I don't sit around working out all the time. I was an all-American football player. I don't have time to work out like I did back in the old days. I have to, goats, goats and, and cows to take care of okay. and fences to repair and land to regenerate. Okay, so if I benched more than 405, would you concede that vegans can get enough protein and amino acids? No, I wouldn't. Uh, okay, so what? how much would I have to bench? To me, you look bloated. Oh, I look bloated, right? Okay, yes, so do. yeah, I am kind of bloated with a lot of muscle. You're you're right about that, right? Like, yeah, that that's that's all bloat. Yeah, I am bloated with muscle. Yeah, look at your face. Yeah, I have a nice, handsome, full face. Yeah, it's it's full. It's definitely full. Uh, okay, how, so how I'm getting enough is nutrition, is, is what you're subjective. telling me. How handsome. So I'm getting is enough subjective. nutrition, is what you're telling me. No, I don't know that to be a fact because I know that you've injured yourself several times. You, don't, over the, you don't know that to be a fact. Okay, years. well, I'm you've claimed, getting enough you've nutrition to bench more than you. You right have now. all kinds of uh, what tendon tendon issues? No, no, you haven't. You haven't. What do you mean? You I injured myself. You've not injured, uh, what, you, over you have a year no ago? injuries. You have no injuries over the last two years. Have you ever injured yourself playing football? I'm pretty sure football players get a lot of injuries. Uh, yeah, you can they're, they're literally look at a list contusion, that goes contusion like injuries, hundreds of lines down on the amount of injuries, injuries yes. in professional I've, football. I've, yeah, uh, yeah athletes my, get I've, injured. I've had my thigh bruised, but I've never torn a ligament or a tendon. Or, or okay, damage. Well, look at the injuries in professional football or even so collegiate football. Are you going to answer the question? Long vegan list games? Of connective tissue. Have injuries. you had an? Have you ha have you been injuring yes, yourself? Yes, I, that been I have had an injury a year ago. Okay, now, Andrew, I would like you to share the screen that I have up so we, we can debunk another lie. Okay, this is the American Chemical Society. Soy protein is not <clears> an ideal protein because it is deficient. In the essential amino methionine. Okay, yeah, so, so if, this, if this, is what, look, this is what this this uh, this animal rights activist, this professional vegan, oh my God. is telling you lies about methionine. Yeah, so if you actually look at the amino acid profile of soybeans, it doesn't have as much uh, methionine as something like fish or eggs or steak, uh, but it is not deficient in methionine. I don't know what they mean by that. 
uh, you and don't, people don't eat only soy. You don't know. So if you, you eat know. soy, fruits, vegetables, American, beans, rice, vegan gains you will get is more. Is do you have any than, evidence? Do you have any vegan evidence gains that vegans more, in general are vegan deficient gains in methionine? More intelligent how do you define than a methionine? The entire American chemical vegan, society. Society. Sorry, how do you diagnose a vegan, methionine? Vegan, 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 vegan gains is more respond, intelligent. Vegan. Can you show me a single vegan? Enough, enough. Hang on, hang on. Let him respond, and then we'll get back well, to you. Well, he's I not promise. responding. I'll he made a claim, get, and I'm asking him I'm a question about the claim. Okay, so Vegan Gaines is making the claim that he's more intelligent than the American Chemical Society. Uh, How do you explain that? Sorry, um, I'm not saying I'm more intelligent. I'm saying their claim is misleading. Um, I don't know what they mean by deficient or what their criteria is for deficiency. Okay, so here, and if you're claiming, oh, wait, 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 use... wait. You, you, you spoke, so it's my, my time to ask you a question. Well, if you're yeah. going to claim that vegans can't get enough methionine, can you show me one case report where a human has ever developed a methionine deficiency? We have I, I'm, not even, take... I'm not even aware of how to diagnose a methionine deficiency in humans. Well, we do know that the one of the leading scientists that authored. The, okay, uh, so you're not answering my question. Can you show you me one me case speak, report vegan? in a human where somebody has developed vegan. a methionine deficiency? One single case speak, report. Vegan? I just want to see one single case vegan. of any human ever in history having a methionine deficiency. So th this is where we get into the the vegan. He's not gains. answering the question because he knows there hasn't vegan been a single instance of anybody gains. having a methionine deficiency. If you can't show me a study showing specifically that if the right toenail has been torn and someone r rips their hamstring, yeah. That so if that, you're claiming vegans yeah. are deficient in methionine, then you should be able to show me a study where somebody actually develops a methionine deficiency, right? We, like one we, case well, report. We, we have vegan after vegan after vegan becoming ex-vegan. And what the vegan That has do, nothing to do with a methionine deficiency. Can you show me vegan, one case could, report of a human number, ever developing a, a methionine deficiency? That the vegan diet is, is deficient in. Can, can, you, can you show me one case report vegan of a vegan having will methionine quit deficiency? Veganism and the cult will attack do you even them. know what the minimum required that, intake that of you methionine is? You do not have is? to quit veganism. Sorry, you do you know what the minimum daily requirement of methionine is? Uh, Do you know what the minimum daily requirement of methionine is? Diet. And you say, so okay, you don't have an answer to any of these questions. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, hang on. We're, we're getting to the point where nobody can understand anything. Vegan games. Right, so what, what, you, what's, oh, hang on, hang on. Vegan, hey, vegan, vegan games. Let's set up a debate. No, you and me. I will hang destroy on. you. Both of you guys. I, I will pile well, you. can't even answer a single one of my questions. So by destroying you, man, just are you scared to debate me? Enough. Uh, clearly not. I'm I don't also mice, not afraid to bench mice, press more than you. Fucking boys, just, just heed what I'm saying. You're a child. I will set that debate up. <laughs> and vegan gains always been welcome on the crucible. He's always going to be welcome on the crucible. He's always been very respectful when he's here. Just like Jeffrey's always been very respectful when he's here. So is Garland Farms. I have no problem setting that up. Okay, so you guys are welcome to do it. This sure. guy in the chat's like. Josh M, he says, you're not still not funny, Andrew. You know what's really funny? Ban that motherfucker. That's always funny to me. But anyway, back to where I was at. Um, no, don't ban him. Just time him out. I just like to fuck with people. We can indeed uh, set that debate up. But for right now, I got to give you the last word, vegan, and then I got to move on to the other callers. Go ahead. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, sure. So if Garland is going to claim that vegans are deficient in methionine, he has to show um, at least a few things. One, that vegans are actually at risk of methionine deficiency. He can't even provide any evidence that vegans are at risk of methionine deficiency and can't show me even one single case report of anybody in human history having a methionine deficiency. Secondly, he doesn't even know what the daily required intake of methionine is and whether or not vegans have trouble even uh, meeting that minimum daily requirement. So this claim he's making that vegans have trouble um, getting enough amino acids is just completely unfounded and nonsensical. And by the way, again, I can bench press more than you. I can beat you in an arm wrestling match. Uh, I'm bigger, stronger than you Bring ever have you in your bitch. life. I'm six foot three, 290 pounds. I'm so, 6'4", 240. Um, I'll, I will trash you. Uh, okay, so you're an inch taller. Um, well, guess what? I have an, uh, on, an extra on, inch on games. you at you, least in loser. some other part of and, my body. And Andrew, I have shared a screen here. <laughs> I've shared a screen to debunk what he just said. <laughs> Whole food vegan diets that moderate bean and soy intake while including ample amounts of fruit and wine beer can be quite low, low, low in methionine. So debunked. 
Uh, okay, so can you uh, show uh, me uh, uh, evidence uh, uh, of methionine uh, uh, deficiencies in vegans eating lots of fruit or something? I just showed it to you. You you didn't. You I just, just said it it's you. low in methionine. You can have a low you. methionine diet without being I just deficient. showed it to you, misanthrope. Uh, okay, great. So you didn't show any evidence of deficiency in humans. You haven't and provided even um, only any evidence. You haven't provided a I definition of what even ass. constitutes a methionine deficiency. You haven't explained what the minimum intake of methionine is or what the ideal intake is and whether or not vegans have trouble meeting that required intake. So again, uh, bigger, stronger than you. you I'm lose. bigger, stronger than you've ever you been lose. in your entire life. You lose. Um, you so lose. no, no you not lose. in my entire life. Well, guess what? If I arm wrestled you, you'd lose. Player, if we had a powerlifting competition, work. you'd lose. And if we had a debate, you'd lose. I We're having a debate right now. College you're on an athletic scholarship, you little puss. Well, um, I'm pretty on, sure enough, 100 enough. years ago, people were shorter and smaller. Hang so yeah. I gave you. You're kind of bragging about nothing. I gave you the last word. If you guys want to set that debate up, <clears throat> I promise I'll set it up. You know I will. Be glad to. Sure. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for coming on tonight, Vegan. Appreciate it. Always no problem. good sport. Take care of yourself, man. Uh, Richie, last caller. <laughs> Go, Richie, are you there? <laughs> what are you? What were you doing? What the I was fuck laying down. Doing? I thought there was like twelve more callers. Fuck, I know, my hair's you're all up, fucked dude. up, dude. You're up. Whatever. I'll just let it ride. <laughs> all right. Uh, I think I speak for the chat when I talk to uh, Jeffrey and I, and I want to know this question. Are you, are you uh, a byproduct? Uh, funny. I get where you're going with that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> basically none of this really made sense to me. Um, That's because you're not wanting it to make sense. You're not actually thinking about it open-mindedly yeah, okay all right well yeah, clearly or biased, i'm not right? or, home, or 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 <laughs> yeah or i'm not possessed by the demon of the vegans that does this number oh i, I could show you plenty of examples Ridiculous. of carnis doing that thing <laughs> show us i mean okay. i mean Richard, right, right. he's right about that right there's plenty, <laughs> there's plenty of them that do do that i i i basically judge my my preference of this debate on uh physiognomy uh jeffrey are you are you familiar with what physiognomy means no jeffrey, what's that mean jeffrey are, are you familiar with that <laughs> <laughs> um you better get to it you better get to <laughs> it <laughs> come on bro all right, all right i was gonna do impressions and stuff but whatever i can't get to it um uh garland no i want to uh, see him come on i just did it Oh, you. that was it. Yeah, well, you're possessed by I'm a smiling. Demon. You probably couldn't see okay. it. I probably, I probably did so well that I blended in such to a your actual perception of of reality. Your your demon, your demon reality. You you thought I was one of you for a second. I did. Shaitan, bro. Anyway, uh, I, all I want to say is Garland. Uh, I I really think this this the whole soy thing got in like, so convoluted. And, and intricate. I really didn't have any idea about what any of that of that was about. But I will say that your uh, your Hank Hill uh, physiognomy <laughs> certainly won my heart. Thank you. All right. Cheers. Thank you, Bobby. Um, <laughs> Thank you, Bobby. <laughs> damn it, Richie! That's Can really you good. Damn bro. point. <laughs> Can you get to the damn point, Richie? Do you have anything? <laughs> No, that's it. That's it. I'm done. Damn it, Bobby. Stop that. <laughs> Garland is way better. <laughs> stop, stop, stop eating those dogs. Anyway, all right. See you later. Thank you so much for the call. We got to get to the super chats, guys. Appreciate all the great participation tonight. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, we always have fun. That's, by the way, that's why Jeffrey, comes, don't listen to his bullshit. He comes back because he's more fun than a human being should be allowed to have. That's why he comes back. Um. <laughs> Let me uh, let me pull up the supers here, guys. All right. So Veramos sends in a two dollar super chat. And he says vegan strats. I don't know what the fuck that means. I don't know what that means, Veramos. Uh, Soap on slope sent in a two dollar forty one cent super chat and says, "Is badgering someone for an answer vegan?" <laughs> well, I mean, it's just basic basic debate tactics right you want to respond to that soap on a slope says is badgering someone for an answer vegan 
He said, yeah. Okay. He was muted. Because of the know. badger part of it. I get it. I, I, I don't even know if that was implicit, but it, that makes it, it funnier. Might, it works. Reginald sends in a $2.05 super chat. It says, meat will add more wrinkles to your brain, Jeff. Don't know where he's going with that either. Willie Jenkins sends in a $20 super chat. He predicted early on that you were going to cry. And I bet against him. I bet against him, Jeffrey. And so I was going to cry? Yeah, he said you were going to cry. And I bet against him. And I he won. So he had times. to send me in. So he had to send me in a $20 super chat. I said, there's no way Jeffrey's going to cry. And yeah. he didn't. So he sent in a $20 super chat. But he did. He was, he was pretty adamant. And he said, I just knew he calls you effeminate bear. Would cry by now. He still may, but I'm a man of my word. Let me arm wrestle the boy. Double or nothing. I'm down. He says he's down. Okay. Reginald sends in a $2.05 super chat. It says Garland Farms versus Spooky Scary Skeleton Guy. <laughs> okay. Reginald sends in $2.05 super chat. It says vegans need stronger father figures. I don't know where he's going with that. I got a good relationship with my dad. Awesome. Veganism rising, unstoppable. Send in a $1.47 super chat. You know why I'm not going to read it? I'm not going to read it because you fucking vegans are so stingy. You're so fucking stingy on the channel. How come only the carnists can send in good super chats? Those fail. last couple were all $1.50. No. What do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> fail, fail. No, they weren't. Nope. None of them were fucking buck 47. That's not even real money. Uh, just. <laughs> That I'm is pretty bad. Though. I'm going to read the fucking like super chat. At least make it a dollar fifty. Yeah, please. I'm going to read the fucking super chat. I'm just fucking with him. He says, since when did Garland start crying about animals? Which is a good question. <laughs> <laughs> is that a question for me? You yeah, want he answer? said, when did you start crying about animals? Okay. Um, I've always been an animal lover. I have uh, dogs. I have cats. I take very good care of my goats and my cattle. Always have. Um, just because you eat meat doesn't mean that you enjoy torturing animals. Um, what what the lit a fi fire under my ass was the vegans claiming that all crop agriculture deaths were incidental. And today we've exposed that as a lie. In fact, they're claiming that they're not responsible for those deaths because soybean meal is a co-product. That's as, <laughs> that's as the best they can do. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to derail there, but I saw I had to bring it up. I, had, I mean, it was there. Right? Uh, not just the tip bear. Thank you so much for the five gifted memberships. Today's Noah, the Jonathan Kleck over on Odyssey, renewed their Crucible membership. Appreciate that very much. Martino Berto sent in a $1.99 super chat and said, Garland, are the units of pain ounces or pounds? I would say that the units of pain are probably best measured in time units. So you've got uh, like the cattle which are killed within a fraction of a second. We're talking about like a thousandth of a second. They're out. Bam, they're out. Versus uh, like the rodenticides that they use in, say, an apple orchard. They'll put out a, 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 a anticoagulant rodenticide bait station, and the, uh, the cute little field mouse wanders in there. He kind of scuttles in. He looks around. He's wondering the hell is that smell it smells good and then he goes over and he, he he eats this little bit of what has been laid for him it's not been laid incidentally it's been laid intentionally and what is it it's poison and so the the, the little cute little field mouse eats it and then he runs out of the bait station and then he starts to he starts to bleed to death internally he starts to die but it doesn't happen immediately it happens over about a two or three week period. And eventually he dies out in the field after many, 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 many seconds, about about uh, uh, two million seconds. He finally dies. And then uh, some little coyote walks along. He says, oh, look there. There's a piece of food for me. 
it's my one of my regular foods. It's a it's a field mouse. I like eating field mouse, and he eats that. And then the coyote runs off, and he, oh, g -g -g -g. he starts to bleed death internally as well. And that's called that's called secondary rodenticide poisoning. And then he runs out there, and guess what he does? He dies after about two weeks of suffering. And then and then a, a buzzard flies over, and he says, "What's what is that down there?" And Frank. His, uh, his other friend, he says, I don't know, but let's fly down and look. And so they, they descend upon the, the carcass of this dead uh, coyote that's the result of the apple orchard. And they say, what is this? And they say, oh, we have to eat it. We have to eat it. It's a damn animal. We're, we're, we're uh, scavengers. So they eat it. And then, and then about 10 buzzards fall over dead. That's called tertiary. It's the third phase of death that's caused by, caused by the crop agriculture that delivers the products that end up on the vegan menu. Veganism is death on a plate. Okay. Well, that was a much more interesting <laughs> answer than I was expecting. But I, I, will, I will just kind of add into there. Um, Jeffrey, uh, if you or your girlfriend ever seen the videos, that, I don't know why I like to watch them, but I do. There's some dude who has like ferrets and he goes out to the farms with the ferrets and they run all the rats down. Little rats and they eat them yeah. all. Yeah. yeah. It's fucking they awesome. Dogs to, and stuff to do it it too. Yeah, they got dogs that do it too. Isn't that fucking yeah. awesome to watch? Come on. Not it's fucking really. awesome to watch. Yes, it is. Come on. You, you don't find yourself, you don't it's find pretty yourself, disturbing, dude. You don't find yourself watching it, and you're like, get that little son the of a dog. The dogs are all like, ah, yeah, like, yeah, exactly. destroying these you're fucking like, little squealing like, animals. Yeah, it's not, not, Rip not my fucking choice head off. Of you never viewing. That. You never do that. You never like just just rip his fucking head off. Never. You never rooting for the dog. Is that dog not having? Well, the a blast? dogs always win. What do you mean? Yeah, but like, the dog's having that a blast. Happen? He's having a blast, having the time of his life. Just say that's like always be like rooting for the champion. Like it's always kind of boring. You always know the guy's going to win. You know, it's like, <laughs> no, I, I root for the underdogs. No, obviously, he's had to put some of those dogs down. Like there was a couple of them couldn't hunt very well. So I think he just took them in the backyard, 22 them right to the head. You know, yeah. I, 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 so like the Old champions yeller. do fall. Right. Anyway, Lubis <laughs> says it a dollar 47 super chat. So Jeff, Jeff, debate me on the ethics of veganism. Versus regenerative agriculture. Okay, that's okay. Lubath, by the way. Okay, sorry, Lubath. Lubath. Okay, yeah. <laughs> the fuck, I'm supposed to know all these terminally online names? I know, I know. Rising, no, they're just people we know. He's, sends in. He's, he's on your guys' side. <laughs> he sends in at a dollar forty-seven. And he says, "Fucking vegans. Canadian cheap motherfucker." Yeah, total fucking. This is <laughs> the vegan side, right? They, they can't, no, he's they, a carnist. Lou His Bass name is, is Veganism carnage. Rising. No, it's in oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, vegans are destroying everything since 1724. <laughs> well, I, I mean, they are giving money to you, so it makes sense that they would be stingy, right? And you're just right there on the show, right? <laughs> you're just right here on the show making it for me. William yeah. Bones sends in a $10 super chat, says absolutely nothing. Uh, Trash Panda sends in a $2.05 super chat and says, are your tattoos vegan, Jeffrey? Uh, yes. Trash Panda sends in $2.05 and he says, oh, I'm sorry, I just read that. Vera Moss sends in a $5 super chat and says, Jeffrey's mic was muted at the very start. Hilarious vegan. He says, hilarious vegan debate strategy. <laughs> can you Can you affirm that that had nothing to do with that? <laughs> By the way, hilarious vegan I don't know. It was a little weird, but wait. So you're really going with the conspiracy that no, I was... no, 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 no. I mean, dude, it's Streamyard. Come on, like it's right. Streamyard. I All mean, right. it, if you were like, oh, that's it, and you cut it, then I'd be like, no, these motherfuckers are doing something. But you, you hung in there and gave me some time, so it's obvious that you weren't intentionally yeah. doing that. All right. Rod Howard sends in a five dollar super chat and says, "I Reich." I like doggy. Kung Fu puppy is good stir fry, very spicy. Me rough you wrong time. I don't, I don't know what the <laughs> fuck. I don't know what he's talking about. I just, That's I your just, team, Garland. Just read it how it comes in. You know, I mean, I would. I'd try it. I'd eat a fucking dog. I don't care if it tastes good. Um, let me get to these other super chats here real quick. 
<clears throat> Rod Howard, appreciated that super chat. Adam Young sent in a four dollar ninety nine cent super chat, and he says, "Jeff, which is worse, cow dying instantly from bolt gun or mouse dying slowly over two weeks after ingested rodenticide?" rodenticide. Well, that's, a, that's a loaded question. I don't agree that that's that's those circumstances actually happen. Two weeks. Uh, can't you, you you die from not having water after two days? Like that doesn't make any sense. So, yeah. Gotcha. All right. Just going to tie these up here, guys. Thanks for bearing with me. We're not quite at the three hour mark, so we're getting you out right on time. Over on the dono chat side. Let's see what came in over there. Uh, so this start, <laughs> starts for four dollars with soy fart. And he says, I will never follow any diet that led Jeffrey to his current physical state. That's um, that's what he says. Um, if you wanted to be a really good cyclist, you'd want to do what I do. Fair enough. Five dollars comes in from Vegan Cage with Wooden Doors. And he says, expel all vegans. No, the vegan debates will continue. They are necessary. Ten dollars comes in from Derail Debate Train. He says, "Are Chris and Jeffrey a byproduct or a co-product of soy raging?" <laughs> that's a good one. That is good. I must yeah, admit, that's co a good one. Co-product, co-product for sure. <laughs> hey, hey, he knows what a co-product is now. <laughs> <laughs> and a whopping twenty-five dollars comes in from Spanky Sy, and he says, "Thank you for the debates. You're very welcome." Uh, we know the Crucible is a rough place. We always appreciate when people uh, participate. We know it's always going to be brutal. Uh, Five dollars comes in from We Was Fishes, and he says, "Jeff, were your kids raised vegan? How about the cat?" My kids are not raised vegan. The cat Boom. is not vegan. Boom. All right. What about the whole what? vegan gains makes? If, if cat I had vegan. a choice, they would have. But that's oh. a whole nother story. Yeah, Vegan fair, parents fair. end up in no. prison. I don't, don't want to play that game. Life. I don't want to dive into your personal life. That's that's not good. But um, I do want to know, do you ascribe to the vegan gains? Uh, make your cat a vegan. Do you, do you subscribe to the make your cat a vegan? If, if our cat didn't have the stomach problems, it does. It would be vegan. Right? Yeah. yeah. Well, there we go. So it's ethical yep. for your cat to eat other animals. Because yeah, I can back that up with with uh, empirical data. And yeah, but your brother vegan gains wants to wants to kill all of his the cat. Predators. His cat looks great. What are you talking about? He he looks great. His cat looks great. His dog looks great. Doesn't he have a banana a, a rabbit that looks great? They're all fine. Wasn't there a study recently done on? Vegan yeah, no, that's what dogs? I just said. Yeah, like yeah, they, they there there was a body. recent study that is very much. In I actually favor have a of, video that covers all of yeah, the of course you uh, do, research Marlin. that's you been done on animals regarding garbage. a vegan diet, and just they're killing animals to figure out what kind of, of vegan diet they can feed in there, bro. Come on, let me ask vegan, you a question. Vegan diet will kill a cat. Like an honest, uh, this is just an honest question, just between us, right? Even though there's hundreds of people watching, I I still just between us, right? So whenever I'm eating a huge rack of ribs, which I love, by the way, and I like throw them over to the dog, do you think that the dog would love me more for throwing at the rib and the rib bones or love you more for like throwing at lettuce and tomato and shit? <laughs> the fuck happened to this guy's audio again? You're not, it doesn't even show muted on my end. He's faking it. He's faking it. He's frozen now. What the fuck? I think his internet connection oh, is on a vegan go. diet. Maybe, maybe we're all right. Uh, can you hear me? I got no audio coming in from you, dude. You're unmuted on this end, but I don't, I don't actually hear anything. Say, say something. What the fuck? What the fuck? Yeah, I don't I don't know either, man. I'm that vegan D DSL is not reliable. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. All right. Well, uh, if if I have to give the shout out on behalf of Jeffrey, I will, but I'd prefer not to. Maybe we can take care of whatever this audio issue is real quick. Just back out of StreamYard, come back in, see if that helps. 
Sometimes that'll just take care of the problem. Just like back right out of the program, just exit out, come back in. Back out, Jeffrey. You're used to that. Okay. Okay. Hang on. One more just came in. Uh, Rod Howard sent in a $5 super chat, and he says, is no one going to address the fact that vegan bloats needs to use roids and chug supplement 380s too heavy for someone not roiding? Check, Jeffrey. check, check. Yeah, you're good, dude. Check. You great. Check one, two. Cool. <clears throat> yeah. I don't know what the fuck happened. Anyway, that's the uh, the question from Rod Howard. Anybody want to address that? Is no one going to address the fact that vegan bloats need to use red? I've, I've, as far as I know, Richard's uh, natty, right? He doesn't do... I don't think he does roids. I don't think he no. looks like someone who does roids. He is big. He is a big boy, but he's not, you know, he's high, he's low carb. Yeah, I don't know. I don't really, you know, you can ask him. I don't fucking know. I don't work out and do all that bullshit. Anyway, that's where we're at. Um, that's the end of the Super Chats, guys. Appreciate so much. We're right at the three-hour mark. We got to wrap the show up. If, uh, if you guys, he says he's fat. What a fucking jerk. If you guys can take a second, we'll start with you, Jeffrey Phillips. If you can manage to unmute yourself. Yeah. Okay, perfect. I hear you. Uh, shout out your social media. Anything you want to shout out, now's the time to do it. Uh, you can find me at uh, youtube.com slash at Jeffrey Phillips on YouTube. And um, I'm on Facebook too, but YouTube's kind of the best place. And I'm I'm sure we'll see Jeffrey again at some point. Always love Yeah, I got Bart K Facebook. next. Do you want to do Bart K? Let's do it. Cool. We'll do it. Jeffrey, uh, you want to try a third time on this subject? No, I don't, I don't this need is to waste your second any more time. time. To lose. <laughs> and number two loss. <laughs> and Garland Farms. Uh, always enjoy having you on as well. He's a regular on the Crucible at this point, seemingly. And also, uh, thanks, Jeffrey, for bringing him, uh, bringing him in. Appreciate it very much. Uh, thanks for having Farms. us, man. Yeah, absolutely. Shout out your channel to everybody where they can find you. Yeah, my channel is Garland Farms on YouTube. Um, I've got tons of uh, videos debunking veganism. I've got lots of vegan uh, videos debunking vegan gains, as a matter of fact, uh, dispose, uh, completely exposing his lies. So go check those out. Vegan gains gets destroyed on the Garland Farms channel. About once a week, I also go over to the uh, Jason... Uh, a Swartz channel, Jason John Swartz channel. We do a live stream over there as well. And we debunk veganism and uh, make complete fools of them. And so uh, come over there, come over to the Garland Farms channel. We'll be uh, waiting for you. All right. I do suggest that you actually subscribe to both these guys' social media. You might not believe this. It was hard for me to believe too. But Jeffrey actually has a pretty good sense of humor. Right? He actually has a pretty good sense of humor. So there's something to be said for that. He really does. Uh, over on the Garland Farm side, I just enjoy watching the videos. I just feel like I feel like Jeffrey's just not honest. Like watching those little ferrets go in and just murder those rats is fucking hilarious. I love it. I know he likes it too. Even Sheila, look at her. She's like, yeah, it's fucking based. But whatever, fine. I guess I'm Gross, the one in the dude. wrong. I guess I'm the one in the fucking wrong. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, from all of us here at the Crucible, to all of you out there in Crucible land, don't miss the 10K pizza party coming up soon. Always hundreds of viewers, thousands of views. That's all due to you. Thank you so much for all the super chats, the donations, and of course, the memberships. That's what makes all this tick so I can set these great debates up. Um, have a wonderful night. You're banned, fucker. No, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs>